This is a HeadGum Podcast. This week on the program, is there anything worse than a Beatles cover song? It's yesterday. I'm Andrew Jupin. Steven Sadak. Chris Cabin. Eric Siska. And we hate movies. Welcome to the fine program. Uh, that's right. We were talking about Danny Boyle's Yesterday. Mm. Uh, this continues mm. our worst of the previous year month. Um, boy, I uh, <clears throat> I got a sour taste in my mouth with this movie, man. <laughs> Lame. I will tell you. you that's the wait, word for this. You don't like Beatles cover tunes, man? I don't. I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. The God. troubles seem so far away, but now it looks like Jeffrey Jones is here to stay. <laughs> what? <laughs> The trouble. I'm just oh, saying, yeah. I got reinvent you. the song. The, these wait, wait, wait. people change the lyrics. <laughs> I was going to say, the troubles. Are you doing the IRA version of this? <laughs> sure. What the I will course. say, half the time when he's singing without a band, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> I feel like I'm on the platform and I'm just like, dude, shut up. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's, I mean, and he, the, the guy is good. Hamish Patel is really good at singing and performing in this yep. movie. Yep. And like, these songs sound good, but I'm like, I just, I get like, PTSD from like waiting for a, a train and some busker is playing for an hour and I'm like right. I wish I was dead. It's just a lame fucking movie. Lame. The thing is, there are dad movies and dad for noon movies, westerns, whatever. This is a parents movie. Yeah, that's we right. Are, this, you're, <laughs> yeah. you're visiting parents. This, this yes. is also a wiener movie. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Like, this is a expand on for wieners. People <laughs> who cannot get over the fact that the Beatles existed and that they were a great band. They have to be the only band. Well, I kind of made fun of this uh, on our, our live show in San Francisco when we were talking about The, the Rock and Nicolas Cage's character as a self-professed Beatle uh, maniac. These are the people that don't realize that uh, the word Beatle maniac is lame. I will say one thing. It's okay to like yes, a movie. Yes, thank you. It's, it's totally fine. I, I mean, know people who actually do like this movie. Of they, course. They, you know, they're older and they enjoy it. And I think the leads are, are good enough. Lily they're James sweet. is great in lots yeah. of things. I think they both I mean, work in this movie. I'm not a fan of the movie. And Danny Boyle can direct the hell out of some stuff. And that happens a couple times in this movie. And I'm like, is this a good movie? And then, like, the script reminds me that it's absolutely not. It's, <laughs> it is absolutely not. I mean, that's the thing is, like, I, I love Danny Boyle as yes. a director. I just don't know. I'm pulling up the, the film. I think he's now. veered off. It's yeah, what has he done for a while What now. has he done for me lately? Uh, Steve Jobs is the most prominent it, one. And that was not good. That was not good. My, I didn't see T2 Train Spotting. It was supposed to be good. It's fine. Yeah, I am back. I'm here. <laughs> give, I want you to take, take off your clothes and give me oh. your hell. And- oh, no, the baby's on the wall again. <laughs> yes, I am Scottish. It is me, a Scottish <laughs> punk. T-1000 baby, liquid metal. But, like, trance was terrible. Didn't see it. Uh, 127 hours. Does anybody oh, remember that movie? I Maybe. remembered liking it, but then I don't remember anything about it so yeah. i guess that says slumdog millionaire classic case of i bought that on blu-ray and never took it out of the fucking plastic I, until the day ooh. i gave it I away i remember for liking free. that movie when it came out that was I a movie that just, that was I that was a parents it. movie it that is a big time. Movie. i got i think chris had a screener of it possibly I and did. i and i was like i'm gonna watch this with my mother and we had a lovely evening but I, i've never thought about it since I'm one of those few people that like sunshine all the way through. Mm. I don't even care about that sun I monster at the end. I thought it's pretty cool. I got to revisit it. I got to revisit it. I got to revisit that. I was thinking about that, too. But then you're into millions. Which that's is fine. Oh, wait, but that's like the baby discovers money. It's movie. another yes. like it's another parents movie. <laughs> yes, that is what it the is. The babies about. have discovered money. Go, 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 oh no, the babies have their own money. <laughs> you maniacs. <laughs> you found all the dollars. Hold on. Apple is now owned by a baby. <laughs> Didn't you get the memo? <laughs> we got the babies bought NASA. <laughs> Gruber's millions. <laughs> I never saw that, but I what you're about to go into now is my 
I was a Danny Boyle head in the in the mid to late nineties. Oh. I, I watched Transpotting a million times. Shallow Grave, I still think is amazing, Rules. and I've watched it a hundred million it is times. Good. Uh, and then what's the other? Oh, 28 Days well, Later. So that's, that was the next one. And going back here. So, O2, yes. I think, is the last time there was a truly excellent Danny Boyle movie. Yes. And 28 Days Later is, is phenomenal. Yeah. And I do like it a lot. Yeah. I think Walking Dead should give him like 20 bucks a week. Like, just to, <laughs> at the very least. Because the, the zombie genre is dead and he brought it back. Like, that's, yeah, that's yeah. how that worked. And for what it is, the beach is okay. I think the beach is okay. Oh, it's that's like right. Great. The beach. Oh, that's kind of silly. About that. the, Which, beach, the beach is a great hangover movie. Mm. It almost ruined his fucking career, though. Yeah. It Remember, did. it almost that's, ruined Leonardo DiCaprio's career. <laughs> oh, Steve just filled seltzer everywhere. That's awesome. I wish we were film, <laughs> filming that on video because it was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> That was like a fucking rocket. Did you put a Mentos in there? <laughs> I did that, not. Seriously, I was like, what is he doing over there? Uh, oh, no, that's, that that's pretty oh, great. No, that's Steve. fantastic. You're, you're okay to do it wet, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's, a, it's like I was just on a water ride. I feel like I was just on a log flume, Ooh. and now I'm going to record a fucking podcast. Because you just watched yesterday in 4DX. <laughs> wet cast. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe that was like a, It was like a volcano experiment from grade school. That's what it looked yes, like. It yeah, was, wow. Well, that's like what happens the... when you take a glass bottle of seltzer and ride it on the fucking subway. Yeah, for it's Wildberry <laughs> Saratoga spring water. Oh, oh interesting. Oh, you shake those up, they'll explode on you. Mm. Yeah, so, you know, obviously us saying that brand name is not a plug for them because their product has actually harmed you. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and harmed us. Yes. Uh, and so this episode, too. <laughs> and the four listeners, like, aren't we supposed to talk about yesterday, not an, an in-studio mishap? <laughs> well, as Steve dries off, Chris Cabin, if you could, uh, just quickly distill uh, for folks at home what this movie is. So this guy, uh, he is uh, wants to be a, song, a singer-songwriter. Jack he- Malik? Jack, Jack Malik, not you and know. the heart attack. Yeah, <laughs> I kept thinking about Jack yeah. Mack. So did I. <laughs> Terrence Malik's nephew, actually. <laughs> uh, do not everybody, so. somebody. <laughs> um, he uh, is about to quit music one night because he's frustrated. Uh-huh. Uh, gets hit by a. Uh, all the lights go out all across the world. The whole world. There's a rolling blackout. A bus hits him. Yep. You know why though? Why? It's Tommy Lee Jones sending those signals down. From from oh, that's right. right. Oh, yeah, from yes. another movie that, from this past <laughs> the year. The Surge or whatever it's <laughs> yeah, called. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Brad Pitt falls off the world's <laughs> largest ladder and then nobody remembers the Beatles. <laughs> yes. I fucking love that ass. I love that large it's ladder. Best. It Incredible. is great. It is uh, a large ladder <laughs> and there are other things in the movie that are also good. <laughs> Well, that, the best is like he's, he's changing the world's highest light bulb. But there are <laughs> like <laughs> electrical surges on Earth because of Tommy Lee Jones's space yeah. stuff, yeah. and that's not right. a spoiler because that's like the premise of the film. It's like yes. sort of the inciting incident, right? Exactly. So yeah. I just it just seems similar here that it does. all the lights are. Like, well, I mean, he wakes up. He learns that Tommy Lee Jones did it, but also <laughs> everybody forgets who the Beatles are. Oh no! Oh no! And other silly th- twists that we will get along S- on the way. Silly is one word for it. Now, I feel like if you took all the schmaltz out of this screenplay, there's something to be said about things that are going on in this movie, and that is two words: Richard Curtis, because there was a script for this. That uh-huh. had it was, it was I think Mackenzie Crook was attached to it, uh-huh. um, which is, would have been an aw- awful movie. Sure. Uh, but who's that? Uh, that's the the original Dwight from the British Office, whatever his name oh, is. Oh sure, yeah. uh, but like weirdo. it was, but it was like um, it was him, but it was like he never reached international stardom. It was much more moderate success, and da 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 da. And it was right. a little a little bit more grounded, a little darker. You know what? Some of these songs just wouldn't play out of the blue. Of nowadays. course, well, that's especially yeah. especially having a hit where it starts out with that, "She Was Just Seven. You, you're yeah. canceled, dude. Yeah, yeah, totally, dude. This album is not getting off the ground. That, that's what I kept on waiting to have. I'm like, nobody would care about the Beatles now. No, I, like I, those songs. Are you fucking serious? I do think that if you released if if the, in this world, I mean, aside from sure. the the butterfly effect of not knowing what the world would look like without the Beatles, which it wouldn't be exactly the same. No, it would. With, you know who wouldn't have a career, Mister Ed Sheeran, in this movie? Yes. My <laughs> fucking god, that is a great point. But but it's also like 
So is it a world where the Beatles don't exist, or is it a world like that because Coca-Cola didn't exist for some well, reason? It didn't all, inspire the Beatles? It <laughs> does seem like all the Beatles are alive. They just never became the, the Beatles. Beatles. Yeah, or That's implied by the twist that we'll get to. <sighs> uh, oh, man. But yeah, it's like the album coming out cool. now, you were saying. You know, but I just feel like it, it, would, it would do well. People are like, oh, this is yeah, kind of cool. It's but like, I mean, it's like, nice. what? who likes pop rock these days even at all like right. you know what i mean like I mean, people do it would, tons of but they do be like second it would be like number three on the charts maybe they would, they would be dominating the world before an album oh, even comes out you know what it exactly would be it would be the exact same amount of fame as she and him <laughs> it's almost yes, essentially yeah. like that is the exact kind of music that they would be making at the, if you heard that now exactly but, it's like adult contemporary nice music right. but maybe in a world where we never had that pop or whatever sure like we skipped it yeah and like then we, we went, needed it now i guess like we went to edm and death metal out of nowhere <laughs> And now we're just like, hey, wouldn't you be kind of nice on the guitar instead? Everybody just know who the kinks are? Yes, exactly. Like, or, or like the the Yardbirds yeah, or something. What the fuck? Or it's a world where the Rolling Stones finally won. <laughs> right. But it's a weird, like, also the thing that's totally nonsensical about this is like he's covering the whole catalog. Yes. And it's so songs from the different albums and they're all... I mean, you know, you folks at home know the Beatles. Like, yeah, those albums are all clearly sounding different, especially the like the yeah. further apart they are. But this is all like, well, it's this whole mixtape that this dude's going <laughs> to release, and it's all amazing. They would be just as popular if you took away everything that was interesting about them. That's the thing. Yeah. Too. Like, what yep. the fuck? It was four guys. They were pro- pretty much an art project too. You know what I mean? Like right. how they dressed themselves, or not them, how their management dressed them, or whatever. Like, sure, all that stuff matters, and also the harmonies matter, mm-hmm. the and drugs. all yep. that's and the drugs. drugs, the drugs, absolutely yeah. the drugs. Jack Malik, fucking do some drugs. <laughs> so but tobacco doesn't exist. That that's so, the thing. which is like so no cigarettes exist. So is, does weed exist? Are people people are smoking anything? Would the fu- would America exist without tobacco? No. I don't think so. The colonies <laughs> needed it. Like you know what I mean? Like the world would be incredibly different if cigarettes didn't exist. I so bet- like the whole plant, like the tobacco plant, doesn't exist. Well, I guess nobody yeah. figured out to make cigarettes out of it. Uh, it's yeah, a we stupid make planet. Uh, we make uh, shirts and pants out of tobacco now. <laughs> it's actually my tobacco <laughs> shirt. Oh, my chewing shirt. <laughs> Those are some fucking pit stains, dude. Yikes. It always smells. It's I don't like, know why. It's like, oh look, it's Tom Waits. Hi everybody, it's me, Tom Waits, in a world without cigarettes. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> That would be kind of something. <laughs> the piano's been drinking. <laughs> so he wouldn't have been he wouldn't have been successful. No, definitely. So maybe you wake up. Yeah. Oh shit. And Tom Waits doesn't exist. And you have to replicate all of his songs. I Hello, like, everyone. It's me. Something, something else. Which you is know? which is what's great about Tom Waits is it sounds already like that already happened. Like <laughs> trombone fish. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Vernon, I guess. I guess. Uh, it, is, it is I, 1992's Sexiest Man Alive, Nick Nolte, still sounding totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, it's me, uh, Michael Madsen. Nice to meet you. I'm an accountant. Uh, <laughs> it's me, Virginia Madsen. <laughs> hi, I'm Elaine Stritch. <laughs> <laughs> Lawrence Tierney. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so this dude, like, starts singing these songs and gets famous off of it. So, to backtrack, yeah, we open, he's busking, nobody's giving a shit. Uh, Rightly so. These songs suck. Yeah, I mean, I think they're intentionally written to sound terrible. The summer song is, like, his hit or his jam, I guess. The one that he likes playing the <sighs> so most. Yeah. it's like we're taking a guy who shouldn't be a musician. <laughs> yes. And sure. we're making him a famous musician with yeah. this yeah. movie. But he really shouldn't. You no, talking about Ed Sheeran? Or are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you on Ed Sheeran. That guy's f- a fucking wreck. <laughs> also, what does that look? Is this? It's just like l- little Boris Eric, Johnson with that hair. Eric, I want you to be honest with me. Is this just because he was in your beloved? What's my beloved? Game, oh, of, Game Thrones. of Thrones. That's right. I, I, you know what? The <laughs> thing is about Ed Sheeran is I couldn't tell you a single song. I recognize that putrid face though. <laughs> So it did kind of take me out of fucking Game of Thrones. But yeah. Wait, does he get killed on Game of Thrones? He, no, he just has a cameo as a Lannister. 
Yeah, he's just a guy. Like, like a, a Lannister Bannerman. Like a, yeah, like a like a knight or whatever. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, just like hanging out at a he's campfire. He's like playing a fucking lute or something. Oh, he does play music in it? I think maybe. That would be great if there was an, a stinger scene at the end of the whole Game of Thrones thing. And, you know, it's all... Tonight. I don't even remember the last shot of the, that show, actually, at this point. But, you know... We, I don't we, remember either. We fade oh, to black. I think it's Jon Snow riding to the Wildlands. That's right. And then we just cut back, and he's hanging from a tree. Just because, like, you know, like, I don't know. <laughs> I'd be into it. That's how it would... You close that character. Just give me full of arrows. Like, somehow there's, like, a hundred arrows in him. It's like, wow, they didn't even take I mean, it out and salvage these arrows? Ed really wanted to be in two episodes. He really fought for it, and we found a way to put him in. <laughs> That's the last shot. <laughs> Uh, this character, Jack Malik, also works at like a Costco type store. He's yes. like a stock guy. And like, there's this thing. I mean, and it's, you know, I actually think like, again, it's Danny Boyle. So it's this opening montage. And I think the end montage too are directed really well. Like you get a sense of this character. It's him. He's got uh, this girl that likes him. And these two, this couple that kind of comes to nothing, they disappear from the movie. That, yeah. like, they're, they're friends that are couples that are his number one fan kind well, of a thing. Yeah. And I, like, well, one's like. I think supposed to be their actual friend, like the dude. Yes, and then the woman, or maybe, or whomever. Are, are they both friends with them? I don't really know. It's they're a couple not friends. Characters. Yeah, they're, they're, they're yeah, and, then, like, and they're like, "Yay, play your song!" And it's like kind of cute. And like, there's this moment where like it's like you know, if you want, you could be manager of this Costco place. And of course, he's like, "Well, I don't want to do that." You know, in, right, yeah. in reality, it's more like, "Yeah, play your song." You know, Killing Eve is on in like thirty minutes. <laughs> well, dude, I was getting flashbacks to like, "Hey, all my friends." Here's this Facebook invite for this improv show yeah, I'm going yeah, to do. Uh, mm-hmm. Please take time out of your Saturday night to come to oh, this Italian s- restaurant we're basement. S- so excited to see you. It's 9 p.m. already? <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay, cool. Oh, you're not going on until 11? We got to go. Yeah, we've got dinner thing. Like early morning, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. no, nothing added on to it. Just early morning <laughs> you know the morning's gonna be tomorrow yeah, so exactly. well the sun's coming up so you know <laughs> oh you're going to get brunch nah i'm gonna have a day in <laughs> hang out uh so lily james gets him a, a spot in like this music festival called the latitude music festival chris cavin is this real i think so okay uh he's playing like the suffolk stage which yeah. is just like a tent with like two old people and kids in it and his friends are there and they're all laughing and having a good time and here's the thing um, yeah. Why don't you try getting a band? No, because he's so good, except for he's not. Well, you'll have to know more than 12 chords, which is what I'm hearing <laughs> from this guy for most of this movie. No solos. No solos. <laughs> no, like, picking. Nothing like that. Nothing. Well, th- yeah, I mean, because Eric's right. He probably should give up. Yeah, yes, definitely. I, I think that's a great <laughs> idea for this guy. And there's give nothing up. wrong with giving up, you know? Right. Land. It's a healthy thing yeah. in a lot of cases. I used for to sure. want to be a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now. <laughs> and now yeah. look at you. Uh, yeah, it that's just, right, dude. You know, all the attorney costs just didn't make sense after no, a while. No way, <laughs> After dude. all those people you killed. <laughs> So, you know, it's not a great gig at the festival. He kind of fucking beefs out, and he decides that he's not going to play music anymore. He runs into this roadie character, who I actually think is really funny. Oh, this guy, Rocky. Yes. Only consistently entertaining part of the movie Uh, is this Joel Fry is the the actor's name. I was getting real, like, English TV comedian vibes from this guy. I don't know that I've seen him in anything. I bet him him and Jim Acosta was in something together. He's in Paddington, Paddington 2, which people love. Um, Wait, did you just say he was in something with Kevin Costner, Chris? No, like he's like Jim McCoster. Like he seems like that kind of level. Jim McCoster? That, Who are you? Wait, Jim Acosta, the, uh, the, flo- the, f- the Florida official that what? that swept Jeff Steen, Jeffrey Epstein shit under the rug? Oh, is that? Oh, no, Jim I Jim meant- Acosta, wasn't that him? Yeah. Is, is that Secretary him? of Labor or something? Something Acosta. Acoster, Maybe John Acosta. I think yeah. it, this guy, some guy who was on, uh, would you... Uh, would I lie to you a lot? Oh, I don't, I don't even forget his name. I don't even know what the fuck that is. What are you talking about? It's what are you old watching? BBC shows? They're all like uh, panel shows know. that they do. Yeah, this dude apparently was in one episode of Game of Thrones or a couple episodes. Ooh. He's also in Ten Thousand BC. My apologies, Jim Acosta is a, a, a CNN journalist. <laughs> oh, that's, <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> But then, no, another Acosta is the guy you're thinking of, Eric. I believe that's ac- accurate. Let's look it up. Uh, anyway, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm so, sorry, I brought it up. <laughs> yeah. he, he, Me too. Alex has, Acosta. That's it. Trump's right. labor secretary. Oh, that guy. Yeah, okay. Um, so, yeah, he meets this guy. This guy's like working for the festival. He yeah. instantly gets fired, which is kind of funny. He's just kind of like a burnout doofus character. And he's great. He's really fun in this movie. Yeah. And, 
The thing is, here's the thing about Lily James in this movie. She's got to dial the thirst back by like 25 to 40 percent. But like, how or is, he's got to dial he, his up. Yeah, that's, that's, how that's, does that's, he that's, not see the thirst? It's insane. I mean, this woman is like he's singing and she is just like playing with her mouth the entire time. <laughs> yeah. And this guy's just like, well, we're good friends. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's insane. It's it, it's nuts. I it's, I. Honestly, thought that this guy like might be blind or something at first, because like, how are you missing all those yeah. visual cues? Like, there's a part where she's like giving him a ride or something, and I swear to God, like Lily James has to like look away from him and like bites her fucking lip exactly. or something. Yeah. I'm like, what is going on? Mark, That's what she does yeah. the entire movie. Where are all the cutscenes where he's explained to everybody he's asexual? <laughs> That's what I really want. My notes are full of. You're adults. You're adults. You're adults. Like if you're a teenager and you're oblivious, exactly. that's one thing. But you guys, are, these these are like characters in their twenties at least. Yeah, right? they, they seem like they're in the late twenties because they said like high school was like ten years ago. So yeah, that's right. something. Yeah, that kind of checks yeah. out. You know, it just. It, but it's yeah, exactly. Like at some point, Lily James, just be the person that's like, hey man, I like you. Yeah. Obviously, well, but I this is like long running. He can't be sexual. Period. I feel. Yeah. Because like when he goes on, on tour that. and he becomes famous. All uh, he never has sex with any groupies except for he says once. Well, there was somebody in Moscow that yeah, one time, which like, is a total lie. Yeah, <laughs> yes, are you fucking is. serious? Where are the drugs? Where's the sex? Mm-hmm. Where's B- yelling they, and no drunk? The, the Beatles never did that, Chris. The oh, Beatles right. were yeah, yeah, yeah. they were, they were wholesome, f- wholesome four yeah. wholesome boys. Mm-hmm. John they, Lennon famously never fucked. <laughs> no. Famously, so he says to her in one of the absolute worst lines in the script uh in in reference to like stopping playing music he goes uh we've come to the end of our long and winding road Ugh. yeah and dude it was like that fucking monty python movie i said to my television better get a bucket i'm going to throw up <laughs> that's the other thing is it's not bad enough that your friend is obsessed with the beatles and plays beatles song it is quoting the beatles yeah. for every little thing like Oh, uh, where'd you go? Well, I didn't go with Lucy in the sky last night. I was at home with my mother. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man, you know what? I think I had a couple too many pints. Baby, you can drive my car. (laughs) Well, that makes sense. That what yours was like. I, I no, I didn't do drugs last night. I didn't do LSD. I guess that's what you meant. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, so yeah, they kind of get into it, and he's like, you know what? I'm just gonna go. He's riding his bike home. Well, she says like, you can't give up. You can't deprive the world of your genius. I was like, like, what "What are we talking about here? That fucking summer song. (laughs) Got a song about a dinosaur too. (laughs) Oh, the Barney theme song. (laughs) I don't know. I think it was just a dinosaur song. Yeah, that song called Sex Dinosaur. But (laughs) but the move is like, you can't do that. You'd you'd be miserable. You want to play music, not like what? You're a genius. It's the thirst talking, and I'm masturbating right now. (laughs) And he's like, well, that's odd that you're doing that. I'm leaving this car. (laughs) What's that? Master Watting? <laughs> well, I, I've never heard of it. Imagine you oh, you got an itch down there, do you? Huh, weird. I'll so- talk to you later. I'll get you some moisturizing cream to actually use for your itch. You wake up tomorrow and masturbation never happens. Oh, man. And you have to be the guy that invents it. Well, if you ever want to talk about when Steve would kill himself in a movie. <laughs> no, well, I would remember. <laughs> so essentially, essentially, nothing would change. But nobody me. knows. But <laughs> would you Would you do the world a solid and te- teach everyone? <laughs> no, I would not. Dude, yeah, that Steve has to create the J-O-I video. Right, like he uploads a video. <laughs> Of yourself wanking? That's yeah, no, the Britishism for it. Nice, right? dude. Nice. Yeah, trying tell, to pepper it in. Tells uh, his friends, oh, I'm going to go to polish the carrot. Oh, you have a garden, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, seriously. You've never heard of polishing the carrot? First of all, I don't announce when I masturbate. Yes, you do. What are you talking about? Guys, I'm jerking off. <laughs> all right. Enjoy, man. Have a good one. That's why we started late today. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, he gets hit by this bus. We're seeing there's a quick montage of like all over the world lights are going out. Yeah, um, all, well, it's all over England and Long Island City specifically. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. just like there's at least two shots of Long Island City standing in for the world. Sure, oh, you got boy. like uh, like the Eiffel Tower is also yeah. featured going out. You know. But this um, should take place in America because with the medical bills, you would have to invent the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the only way you'd be able to get out of it. The one working light in Russia goes out. 
They got a few. <laughs> oh, yeah, but you're right, though. It's like, oh, fuck, I, got, I had to stay in the hospital for two weeks. Better start the biggest band in the world. <laughs> Because I'm going to get out of this. Because I mean, this is this takes place in the wholesome United Kingdom, mm-hmm. so a just land a, with absolutely no problems. Yeah, well, that's the I weird. mean, they'll, they'll definitely get even worse, right? Like yeah. if they get rid of their healthcare system. Which they this might. was like this yeah. looked like a vacation being hit by a bus. <laughs> well, yeah. But what? So did Brexit also go away when this? Oh, that's happened? a great question. Well, th- this movie is so apolitical. Yeah. A anything, a any kind of conflict aside from. I don't know the Beatles and like maybe making too much money is bad. Like that's all this movie cares about. Like <laughs> yeah. tell that to Paul McCartney. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Fuckers and pig shit luxury. <laughs> but that's there's no like what about the, what 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 is the political situation in England? What you know what I mean? Like do people give a shit about whatever? Well, you know? I, I know you're I, asking way too much of this movie. A movie in where the Beatles never existed is probably not going to touch on the Brexit issue. <laughs> really? Why not? Well, you see, the Beatles, uh-huh. them existing, uh-huh. inspired Brexit. Oh, it's like dominoes, oh. eventually. Because <laughs> oh. it gives the British people such a uh, nationalism modern I guess day. that's true. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, that would make sense. I made it work. <laughs> Sure. I'll buy that. <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. Oh, you convinced one person then. He yeah. wakes up. Yeah, that, that's that's what I actually I never real, didn't realize it. He wakes up and his teeth are all like missing and misshapen and stuff. I'm like, oh man. And then he gets these new teeth. And I'm like, I guess he must be rich. No, you're right, Eric. Yeah. You just get new teeth on the street in England. They give them yeah. to you. Street teeth. <laughs> <laughs> street teeth. Ten for five. <laughs> I mean, if this movie did realistically, and if we, were, if we were being realistic, and it did take place in the United States, he would just be cutting himself in in the in the fucking hospital bed, murdering himself, <laughs> pouring his blood into like a bedpan because you can't afford to live. Okay, I was wondering all what this. view of you're not getting street teeth. This isn't the Twenty Eight Days Later version yes. of England at this point. It makes no, yeah. It, it, you would actually like have to have to invent the Beatles, or maybe yeah. maybe even the Chain Smokers, possibly. <laughs> well, no one's gonna understand. Like, what does that name mean? Because <laughs> no, there's no right. cigarettes. That's oh right. no, the world, uh, the world's not the Chain Smokers. Oh, no. you Are imagine? you arsonists or something? <laughs> So the first hint that something might be up is she's like, "Oh, I'll be back later," and he's like. Something's something like, don't come back when I'm 64 oh, or whatever. Right. And she's like, why 64? And he's like, the fuck do you say? <laughs> I was having the same question. Why 64? Because I don't know that lyric. You know I know you the Beatles, d- but I don't know that no, lyric. No, Eric, didn't the Beatles change your life? Just the, the mere fact that the no. Beatles even existed. You don't know the song, When I'm 64? Nope. Yeah. What? Could be a no for me, dog. Wow, weird. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Fuck, dude. Hey, Eric, did you get hit by a bus recently? I don't know, man. What? Uh, uh, where's uh, the nurse? <laughs> oh, I saw her standing there. <laughs> the fuck did you just say? <laughs> well, I mean, I would, you say? I would say if, if you made that Beatles joke to me, I'd be like, I would say, what the fuck did you just say to me? Even I though I would it. get it, I'd be annoyed that you like, did Like, why it. are we making jokes about Beatles songs? <laughs> also, because I feel like if you're going to set this up, that he's like this you know, Beatle obsessive person. Mm-hmm. He's got to be playing covers when you see him playing these gigs. That was all so much more sense. He's just talking about the Beatles later, and you're like, why wouldn't he incorporate that into his music? E- even when you see his room, it doesn't have like Beatles paraphernalia yeah. in it either, which is kind of odd. Yeah. And he remembers all the lyrics eventually of all the songs. Yes. Yeah, that's a that's what a crazy person does. He has does. some trouble with Eleanor Rigby, right? A little bit like of a, trouble with Eleanor like Rigby. That's like the conflict of the yeah. film. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I don't remember the lyrics to Eleanor Rigby, the central fucking conflict. So he uh, he gets out of the hospital eventually and his friends uh, take him out for a drink. And it's it's actually, it was kind of a nice gesture. They buy him a new guitar because the, his others were smashed in the accident. And he's got these fancy new fucking street teeth, man. Just, just yeah. gorgeous. I don't, I don't think he has the teeth at this part because the dude is still making fun of him. Oh, uh, okay. It. And I got really anxious because I'm like, am I going to have to watch this whole movie with those fucking teeth gone? Yeah, I, mm. I thought that as well. But then I was like, no, he becomes a huge star at some point. So at some point he's getting his face fixed. They also surg- they like surgically removed his beard. 
Oh, yeah. Shaving. Yeah. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah. Surgically removed. Well, like, like, could you imagine? Like, like so- you'll never grow a beard again. Oh, like dude, a if doctor they- saying the prognosis on your beard is. <laughs> if they have to shave you in America, it's like $600. It's like oh, a, a, a bill for $600. Hospital know. shave. I'd charge someone $600 if I had to <laughs> shave them. I'd be a terrible barber. Uh, so they're like, oh, here's your new guitar as a gift. Like, why don't you play something, play something, play something? And he plays yesterday, and they're all like, Oh my God! This woman starts crying. Like the the woman of the couple is like, "That's the most beautiful song I've ever heard in my life." Oh yeah, and all the benches are ruined at this picnic table <laughs> <laughs> because. And again, like it's a it's a great song. I don't even call it's it. It's an a great excellent song. song. Of course it is. But you wouldn't stop what you're doing and be like. <gasps> I mean, it's just a little what, much. What is this enchanting melody from another plane of existence? <laughs> they might, because in this world, the only musical acts that exist are fucking him, is him, Ed Sheeran, and Coldplay. Yeah, that's mm. true. That's it, You're apparently. Right. And I'd, if that was I'd true... Be, I'd be trying to be hit by a bus. <laughs> <laughs> if that was true, I would be just blown away by someone singing Yesterday on acoustic guitar. So he's, like, getting all frustrated and whatnot because they're like, when did you write that? And he's like, I didn't write that. Paul McCartney wrote that. And they're like, who? What is this? What's the beat? And he thinks that they're fucking with him. Sure. And this is where it's like, you could take this movie and they could turn into a crazy ass Twilight Zone. That would be fun. Type thing. And, and Especially like, with two characters that we meet a little later. You could really put some fucking, you know, teeth on this movie. And and you could still have it be sweet, but like have a little bit of bite to this. You know what I mean? Like it's yes. just it's just too much sweetness. Exactly. Uh, and, so he goes home and he's Googling the Beatles. Oh. Yes. And it just keeps like reverting him to the Wikipedia entry for Beatles. Yeah. The, the bug. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, okay. And then, then he also looks up 08. For some reason, oh, like uh, uh, David Bowie still exists. Um, all these other bands exist. But for whatever reason, the only band that would not exist because of the Beatles would be Oasis, question mark. And I know that they were heavily influenced, but like, so was everybody else. Either yeah. influenced by, I'm going to do the exact opposite of what those fucking clowns are doing, like David Bowie. Right. Or like, you know, or directly like, I want to try and do what the Beatles yeah. are doing or influence it one way or another. Blur you know? would have been an experimental electronic band. Exactly. But uh, wait, so you're saying the movie says that Oasis does not exist? It does yeah. not. He also yeah, he looks up Oasis it. and it's not there for some reason. Oh, so why not? Back- oh, sorry. Oh, no, no. I was just saying, why not put Wonderwall in your fucking album then? Who cares? Exactly. That, that would be another Because he also even says that like the re- the way him and Lily James got together as yes. friends was a uh, grade school or high school talent show. And again, he's playing Wonderwall. You don't hear it. You just sort of see it. And this like. Again, this 15-year-old actress is like, oh, my God. Oh, my fucking Jesus Christ. It's going to happen. So what happened in this reality that Oasis didn't exist? Did he play Basket Case by Green Day? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's like, uh, here's a selection off my favorite album, Dookie. <laughs> in the, in or later- Harvey Danger, dude. Oh, oh fuck. Well, Flagpole Sitta? No. Oh, wow, yeah. Harvey Mania. <laughs> that definitely. happened. But actually, the second time you see them go back to that talent show or whatever, you do hear him singing it. Oh, do you? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I remember thinking, like, oh, I want to put on What's the Story Morning Glory yeah. after this. Um, what would be really funny is if he was like, Paul McCartney wrote that song, and they were like, that guy from that band Wings. <laughs> that would, that would be great. Yeah. Yes. No Beatles, but Wings still on top. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Band on the run. I love it. It's fucking excellent. Or what if I Paul think Hall is dead? <laughs> oh, I think it, that's what happened. Yeah, because yeah. he's not in the movie. Maybe it, maybe he may, released Ram at least. I'd be okay with that. Oh, sure. Paul and Linda got Ram out. That would mm-hmm. be totally fine. Was that a truck they did? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. It's a Paul McCartney album. Never heard it. It's Dodge Tough. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, oh, I've got an idea. And he like is going to... He he he's, he he gives he gives up on previously giving up music. He's like, I'm going to start playing Beatles songs. Yeah, there's a fun, charming scene with him and his parents. He wants to play. Uh, what uh, do you want to play? Hey Jude, no, he wants to play uh, something. Uh, no, he's trying to play Let, Let It, it be. be. Let yeah. It Be. That's right. You thought this was charming? I thought it was fucking obnoxious. It, well, no, that's not I mean. charming oh. in quotation oh, marks. Because yeah. it's like he's going to play it, and then his parents are like. 
being annoying and they're like talking over him and neighbor neighbors, comes over the multiple neighbors come over there's pop-ins they're doing the pop-ins but, man I pop-ins guess with neighbors you can get right out of here but is this like this is like the tea time scenario is this I what guess. i've heard of i mean like, i think with those weird doorknobs that they have in england anyone could just come in your house exactly. what like a weird door doorknobs <laughs> you watch an english television show doorknobs are all out of sorts they're in the center of the door it's a latch sometimes they are anti doorknobs in that no, country it drives me fucking crazy S- steve sherlock is in a different time you see <laughs> it's like oh come on into my house jez and it's like this fucking like little little slat I, that he's opening I, up I, yes i do understand what you're talking about although steve to put you at ease i was just in london a couple months back mm-hmm. and you know what for all the weird doorknobs, mm. way more normal doorknobs. Okay, all right. So it's it's okay. I get. I remember what you're saying, but for the most part, that plague is being eradicated. <laughs> so wait, like the weird doorknobs are like King Arthur put them in, or what? Like, <laughs> it's like olden time, yeah. right? Yeah. It's just, well, no, I think that was part of Brexit. It was like, we, we are leaving the EU and we're changing our doorknobs to normal. All right, guys? Our culture is being changed. Oh, doorknob so- fascists. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like my doorknob in the middle of the door, isn't it? <laughs> Put it up on top. I can do it. <laughs> I like doorknobs on the bottom left corner. That's where a doorknob ought to be. My doorknob's just a rope and a horse puts its mouth around it and walks backwards and that's how the door opens. Oh, the doorknob's inside. All right, all right. That's a, a quick one, my boy. <laughs> Do English people can come to America and say, oh, it's too easy. Look at it. It's right there. <laughs> it's like a baby game. <laughs> no challenge to open this door. Why, you put all the doors on easy level? <laughs> that's a great point because, I mean, before there were doorknobs, British people had to answer riddles and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that to makes get sense. Into a to get anywhere. Yeah. Oh man, so like he gets these songs going and like he lays down some Beatles tunes at this like shitty recording studio. Yeah, some guy discovers him. Like I think Lily James finds, oh, this guy, Gareth, who becomes a character, or Gavin, I think. Gavin. Gavin. He, he's he playing, plays some gig. He's playing a gig at a bar, and oh. the guy at the bar is like, I have a little studio yes. in my back. Come and record these shitty songs, <laughs> and then, you know, we'll get going, I guess. Yeah, so he lays down like five songs here it's tracks on the tracks is the name of the studio because the gag is it's a recording studio right on train tracks and here's the problem is like you were talking about good montages in general yeah this one i'm like i get it you don't have to go this is going on for 10 minutes oh with they're recording all the songs it's so cute it's so they're putting on rubber gloves and they're like clapping and all that stuff they're having listen guys they're having a great time (laughs) You oh, can just oh, see the oh, oh. fun they're having Trains recording these going songs. by. Be careful. Stop. Stop for a second. Stop. Okay, now do the fun song again. Yeah. It must be hard for Lily James to perform when she's so massively horny this entire film. Yeah. I know I can't do it. <laughs> she's always like hanging on to a ledge and like just squeezing it a little bit. <laughs> oh, she is, I'm sorry. This performance is batshit. It's the horniest performance I've seen this side of pornography. <laughs> is. is this why I liked it? <laughs> I think it might be. <laughs> so... With this, like, newfound EP that he's cut, he's on, like, a closed-circuit television station for the Costco company because it's, like, a dude... Oh, right. ...at the store, like, because they're all dressed in the same uniform, and he's, like... It's not Costco, but it's yeah. some sort of like bulk store. It mm-hmm. looks like, and it's it's like the television network that it runs. And he's like, "So you're a stock boy here. That's cool. Let's play a song for us. Oh, that's great on this stock room TV or whatever." And then Ed Sheeran he sees this. Yes, because it's like local. Oh yeah, like, local enough, you know, to the town kind of broadcast or whatever. And Ed Sheeran calls him. He thinks it's a prank call. Oh right, he tells him to go fuck himself because oh my god, who Ed Sheeran called you? Could you imagine, Chris, if Ed Sheeran called you? Could you even imagine it? I my heart would stop. <laughs> I'd send right that, there. send that fucker right to voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, it's Ed Sheeran again. Uh, just trying to touch base. <laughs> I really need you to pick up the phone, man. <laughs> Oh. You know why. Hello, this is Ed Sheeran. I'm calling you about your auto insurance. He's just doing like uh, <laughs> robocalls. Uh, so, yeah, so Ed Sheeran shows up at his house in the middle of the night. Yeah. Terrifying. He fucking puts his hand in the middle of the door and opens it wide. <laughs> Imagine that you open the door and night Frodo is coming into your house. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can't let those in. Right. They're just inside. scared. 
It is. It's like a. He's like a dark <laughs> hobbit, like yeah. an evil hobbit or something. Can't like feed those elf. night photos after midnight, dude. <laughs> oh my god, he looks like it could spawn by itself. Ed Sheeran. <laughs> it's just a nasty looking visage. <laughs> Come on, man. My, I don't like him. Come on tour with me, my precious. <laughs> <laughs> so he says, hey, man, we had somebody back out of the opening slot for the tour. Yeah. We're going to Moscow in the morning. Like, do you want to come, you know, play for me? Open the show. Uh, do I have to sign a contract? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't have to do What's that. What's the money situation? Ah, none of, none of your ah we'll figure it out don't, on don't the plane. Worry. It's a multi million dollar deal, but whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll get you a couple hundred. <laughs> and he goes, he's super excited. Um, and he goes to L's apartment and he's like, oh man, I get to go to Moscow tomorrow. You're coming, right? You're my manager, my roadie, my all this stuff. And she's like, well, no, I, I teach class, blah, blah, blah. You she's know, a I, maths teacher, as mm-hmm. they all say. Well, well she's on leave for horniness. So. <laughs> she should be. Like, call in sick. Go uh, I was, I was placed on administrative leave due to constant horniness. <laughs> this complete <laughs> moron sang the Beatles for me, and I have to stay home for a week. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, My I knees won't her. stop shaking. <laughs> Speaking of leave, Eric brings up a good point. Uh, as I understand it, in the UK, you get... F- 15 mm. weeks off a year? Is that how that works? Like, I don't know if that's the I accurate thing. No, but you, whatever, so there's 52 weeks a year. Whatever, yeah. whatever half of that is. <laughs> exactly. is uh, you work two half. days a week. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of leave because, again, yeah. your, your your country is more socialist than ours, therefore smarter. Um, you This lady could take a week off yes. and be like, I'm going to see what's going I, I don't know if it's that, that easy for a fucking teacher. Yeah, you can't just talk, leave come in the middle on. of the school year. Just get fucking Mrs. Doubtfire in, teach a class <laughs> or two. Like, it doesn't matter. School <laughs> doesn't. <laughs> yeah, Ed Sheeran comes in. Oh, with my God. God. <laughs> Hello, deities. Man, put a rubber mask on that guy. It'd be an improvement. I'm in wow. love with your body, children. <laughs> So we cut to he's on a plane with Rocky. Yeah, he takes his, his buddy there. Uh, it's, it's like Ed Sheeran's private jet. Now, here's the thing. You guys pointed it out, and I I just read it completely wrong, but the woman, uh, there's, a, there's a flight attendant who comes up to them, mm-hmm. and she's like, oh, would you like some champagne? And Rocky takes a glass, and he's like, uh, 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 what's his face? What is his character's name? Rocky is the... No, no, no. Uh, Jack. 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 Yeah. This fucking person who is leading this movie. Jack Terrence Malick. Right. <laughs> Jack is like, oh, do you have some Coke? And she's yeah. like, what? And there's this long pause, uh-huh. and he's like, oh, I'll just have a Pepsi then? I thought they were making a really lame, like, it's a rock star's plane. She thinks he's asking for some fucking Coke. I think that's also the joke. I there. think that is there. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's double. already he's already done the Coke joke once because he asked for it somewhere else. Yeah. Oh, say? does he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Coca-Cola. Oh, I totally missed that. Then. Coca. He even Google's it. Coca Cola doesn't exist in this movie, so we can get the lead characters to say Coca Cola five to ten times and Pepsi. But that's the weird big thing. soda, man. If you're the if big, big soda, so, if you're the Pepsi Corporation, it's like, oh, this is a wonderful product uh, movie. We're in uh, since Coca Cola exists, anyone would want a Pepsi. Excellent. <laughs> number two becomes number one. Finally, what a win for Pepsi. We've won, fellas. <laughs> All it took was this fictitious global blackout. <laughs> so cigarettes inspired the guy that invented Coca-Cola. I see. And Coca-Cola inspired the Beatles. Mm. Right. What the about end. What about cocaine? What's what is what's the story with cocaine? I th- think it might still exist and it inspires a lot of people. <laughs> no, dude, because like the indigenous of South America never thought to fucking Oh no. do anything with it. No, Neil Young still exists. So coke say. is still there. <laughs> you think no, but if you, it, it, he exists, but if you watch the last waltz, he doesn't have that fucking booger sugar hanging out. <laughs> I was like, you can take the Beatles out of the music landscape, and it would be very different. You take cocaine yeah. out of the music landscape, I don't know what you would have left. There's no music. No. <laughs> like James Taylor, maybe. It's all big band music. <laughs> that elevator music. You know? But it's not elevator music of Beatles songs like you will normally find. Right, no, and, it's just pleasant melodies. And Ed fucking Sheeran. <laughs> Somehow. What is with that guy? How can you be so lame? I well, don't know. That Eric. dude needs to do drugs or almost die. He needs to have some type of life experience. I that think. would be nice. He's, Other than going on he's Game of Thrones. smelling sheets and singing about it. 
That's this. What? <laughs> That's oh, that yeah? song. Shape of the. I'm, I'm in love with the shape of you. Your body. It's on my sheets. Yeah. It's like we fucked last night, Ew. and my sheets smell like the fuck. Wait, hang on a second. So, Steve Sadek, are you saying right here and now that you know an Ed Sheeran song? I know song? one. Because There's one always... very popular one. Yeah. You've yeah. heard it for sure. What is it? Shape of You. In the Shape of You, you have heard somewhere. He's singing about sheets? Yeah. It's like, like, oh, I... my sheets look like you, love. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in love with your body. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh. Something tells me that's like, not how it look sounds. Look at the ass groove you left in the couch. <laughs> Ooh, let's write a song. So he's singing about like that hole that Mrs. Bates leaves in the <laughs> yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was his main, you know, inspiration was Mrs. Taking Bates. Take you to the fruit cellar. <laughs> Cause oh, I'm oh. a nice fella. So apparently he's done rap music. Yeah, he there's does a like joke kind of... here with the roadie character and him. They go back and forth oh, yeah, on he's... the plane. Do you know the rap? Yeah. No, I don't. Oh no, I know. I don't. Oh, I don't know the rap. No, I was just like, this was a thing. Apparently, this was like a controversy. He's done songs where he also is like he's he, kind of rhyming in or them. like does guitar as like the beat kind of thing. That is yes. stupid. <laughs> Cannot name that. That I no. just know the main yeah, I just, song. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's the song that was everywhere for a couple it's, years that ago. Song, oh, actually, I have heard of that song. The title is uh, "Utmost Dumb Fuckery." <laughs> yes. So, what is the thing about combing your hair completely over your face? Like that? <laughs> Well, it's what it's, is that? It's I the mean, cousin you, it look, and it's yeah. going very well in it's the UK. Like if he was a, he looks like he should be leading an emo band in two thousand two. Yes, and that's that. Yeah, he does. But I mean, he's I, singing. It's he's all acoustic, by the way. Is that a thing? No, I, no, I think he's got a band. Really. I, don't, I don't know. No. I think he can play them all on the acoustic, but I see. I so see. he's playing this show in Moscow, right. and for some reason. Uh, Jack decides to sing back in the USSR, right. which is the a. Yeah, it would not drive the crowd. I feel like wild. it wouldn't even land. It, it would not be like, fucking stabbed fuck in the parking lot. Talk- <laughs> I was like, wow, this is a fucking choice, buddy. <laughs> like, sing fucking Blackbird. You know what I mean? Like that would bring the house down. But you, back in the USSR, also doesn't mean like it, it. Also, like the idea that the songwriting is so good. And these He's Beatles- singing about our oppressive regime. Yay! I Thirty mean, years after know, it failed, maybe. So- you know, I'm sure there's people that that yearn for the days of the Soviet Union, but sure. at the same time, that is a simple ass song. It is. There's not a lot to it. Exactly, and it doesn't. Like the songwriter is so good. People are like, oh my god, that's fucking amazing. Like it, it was big when it came <laughs> out because the fucking USSR still stood. And the whole song is, I'm glad to be back in the USSR so I can fuck all the Russian women. <laughs> that's yeah. essentially the message of the you song. You don't know how lucky you are, boy. Mm-hmm. Back in the USSR. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's an odd choice. It's, and it's crazy that they go ape shit over it. Like they throw throwing borscht at this fucker. <laughs> <laughs> Putin is just gonna send one of his hitters there just to get it done. It, totally, you're not getting yeah. out of that club. The doors are locked and it's being set on fire. It seems like a divisive type of song to play. It's like going to Yugoslavia and talking about Tito or something, <laughs> yeah, which some people will love and some will not. Hey, uh, hey, Jack! I heard your track. It's amazing. Back in the U.S., Ed Snowden here. Just, uh, I was in the crowd for the Ed Sheeran show, and you were amazing, man. Yeah, I don't know how, but I got my girlfriend here too. <laughs> we're hanging out, uh, and uh, that was a hell of a set you just did. Yeah, I'm gonna get back to my uh, my total underground apartment, and I'm gonna post on the dark web. <laughs> My review of your show. <laughs> Chocla Blue, you're not doing that till you do the dishes. <laughs> oh, I'm going to tell uh, my friend Steven uh, Chagall and my friend Gerard Depardieu <laughs> about you because they're going to love this song. They're going to love this shit. Uh, yeah, Departy, that's what I call him these days. He's a big <laughs> fan of acoustic songs. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, Snowden. I don't, <laughs> I don't know, man. Back at the USSR, that's a little productive. <laughs> Zutelo, why would you sing about this fallen political empire? It makes no sense. Oh, USSR, that's where my sex slaves come from. <laughs> <laughs> Can so, I be your manager? <laughs> I'm going to be Ed Snowden, your manager. <laughs> Only if you're playing songs in Russia. <laughs> Uh, so whatever, they go ape shit. Uh, we're hanging out at like a club or backstage or something after the fact. This songwriting contest, I don't know what the fuck it is. It just drives me nuts. It's really uncomfortable. Ed Sheeran, who's feeling like this big because this dude fucking killed it at this concert. He's like 
you know, threatened by him. And he's like, all right, man, we're going to have a fucking songwriting off. This is did pathetic. Did is they, should, they should do West Side Story dance fighting <laughs> if that's what we're going with. And he's like, so we're, you go in that room. I'm going to go in this room. You got 10 minutes to write a totally original song. And we're going to p- perform it in front of this group of people. And... Whoever wins mm. is the best songwriter you know, in the world. After you do a concert and you put it, you put it, you put your all into it. You're, <laughs> yeah. you're up there, you're on stage, you're sweating. It's a huge thing. Immediately afterwards, you like to do a free concert. Oh, for sure. After, <laughs> a yeah, private exactly. and to yeah. work, to write a song yeah. in 10 fucking minutes. <laughs> but it doesn't make any sense. He's like, it can't be a song you've written before. And this guy's like, okay. Like, yeah, of course he's going to use another song that he's written. And obviously, the long and winding road is going to be I Swear I'm Not Frodo. <laughs> Uh, an original track by Ed Sheeran that uh, was on the soundtrack. No, he sings some Penguin song. Anyone get <laughs> yes. this? Well, because uh, I think the whole idea is yeah. like it's just supposed to be garbagey sounding lyrics because yeah. he's making stuff no, off. It's just because it's Ed Sheeran, <laughs> who is a penguin. Yeah, I think so. Right? He's from the no- the sa- is it South Pole or is he North Pole? I think he's one of those South Pole penguins gotcha. you hear so much about. He yeah. does seem like a consigliere of Santa Claus <laughs> in some way. Some kind of go between in the North Pole. Right. Or like he could be like, you know, like one of these elves that want to use speaks surf. elf. Mm. Oh, definitely. So he can like you look at that guy in between. Could see the elf coming off his lips easy. <laughs> Head of the elf union, Ed Sheeran. <laughs> I got to tell you, Santa, they're looking for an eight hour work day here. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh. I'm in love with the cookies and milk. <laughs> <laughs> that's like his song. Is that a song? That's his song. Is yeah. that the is that the one about the, the fucking shape the of you? Sheet? The, the yeah. fucking the sheets. Sheets. <laughs> sheets. sheets. Yeah. Sheet. yeah. Sorry. I that was a <laughs> Freudian slip. <laughs> so yeah, Ed Sheeran sings a penguin song. It's met with mixed reviews, I guess. <laughs> and then so this Ed mother- Snow's like, get the fuck off the stage. A cigar might like that one. Actually, he loves penguins. <laughs> yeah, I love eating them for dinner. <laughs> Penguin barbecue, yeah. <laughs> he just takes one and like dips it in, skeleton out. <laughs> yes, like a cartoon cat. Can I get a, a penguin medium rare with some barbecue sauce? <laughs> no, a lot. It has to be a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah. So then he comes out. He sits at the piano. He sings the long and winding road. Mm-hmm. Everybody in the bar comes, and like they're supposed to do like you know a clap off, and then like Ed Sheeran is so disgusted with himself. He's like. <laughs> No, that won't be necessary. Yep. That will not be necessary. It'd be um, great if this guy caused Ed Sheeran to hang himself. That'd like, be yep. so cool. <laughs> it would be yep. like so. Like, right. And then, then he, that Abe bring stakes to the film. He could use one of those middle doorknobs. <laughs> <laughs> But it would be a thing wherein he would feel like, oh, my God, my lie has now, I have blood yep. on my hands. Yeah. Absolutely. Because I pretended everything was so easy for me. Tragedy it's- out of Moscow this morning. Ed Sheeran, after rightfully losing a songwriting <laughs> contest, ended it all using Jack- one of those weird middle doorknobs. Jack's it- coming back from the stage and is like, is like trying to open his door and it won't open. Oh, man. oh <laughs> nice. Like Jared Harris. <laughs> <laughs> but also <laughs> and like what if oh shit what if they're like Ed Sheeran today dead in Moscow um some believe he was uh he committed suicide other suspect foul play from the Putin regime <laughs> <laughs> The war starts. <laughs> World War Three because of yeah. Ed Sheeran. Because people love Ed Sheeran. They I mean, do. We're, we're, we're having a bit of a laugh. Yeah. I'm sure he's a fine chap. Okay, <laughs> folks. I'm sure Calm he does. I'm sure at least half of your doorknobs are normal. I'm sure at least <laughs> exactly. half. <laughs> News out of Moscow today. Uh, a light hit Ed Sheeran and he turned into a puddle of goop with bones <laughs> in it. Much like the gremlin of yore. Ed Sheeran, noted vampire, dead today <laughs> at 400. <laughs> Oddly enough, all of the security tapes out Outside of Ed Sheeran's <laughs> hotel room were, were missing or destroyed. Some suspect foul play. Accidentally written over is the word from the prison system today. Alex Acosta, I'm going to have to ask you to sweep this Ed Sheeran thing <laughs> under the rug. All right, right under the latch, whatever doorknob they have. It is important to mention, by the way, when he is singing back in the USSR at this <laughs> concert, there is a dude in the back of the oh, auditorium right. oh. who's just like standing, staring at him. 
you don't really know what's going on. Oh, of course. And yeah. then it's like long after the club is cleared out, this dude is just like staring at the stage, like kind of crying. Oh, and that's, that's that, where yeah. they leave it for now. Yeah. And, like, and um, at, at this point, Kate McKinnon, Kate McKinnon shows up. Uh, we have to talk about her in this movie. Uh, she, I Here's the thing. I really love Kate McKinnon. She is out of place in this movie. She's not good. At, I mean, I think it's it's a bad performance. It's a, it's a poorly written role, but it's also like she needs to dial it back. And I do like I like her on Saturday Night Live. Fine, right. I have no like real like long standing grudge against her. I think she's really really it's, funny. It's just not the right movie for her. Or it's well, not I think the right- she's playing it a certain way that no one else is playing yes. it. Yes, that she heard the she heard the premise and thought it was stupid, which <laughs> I understand. You want to play a fun dumb character in it, but no, everyone else is like. Treating it like it's the fucking Bible. She's yeah. playing her normal Kate McKinnon y cartoon character kind yeah. of performance. Well, it's the role where you're actually going after the music industry and like she's meaner than the rest of the movie, like by quite a margin. So if the movie was a yank. Yes. She's the only I guess yank, that's right? also a point. But like you if if that was the movie you wanted to make, you could make it, but this movie is mostly not about the music industry. No, I would it's not. Say. Right. It's it's not. It thinks it is, and then it stops uh. being about that for like an hour so we can have this romance bullshit. But like this part of it, you're right. Like this character, if played differently, would be lampooning that, but she's too silly, so you don't take yeah. her serious. Right. And she keeps Which, saying like these aside things that are like one of those like those kinds of jokes where like it would stop a real conversation dead. Like Yeah, you're, you're, oh, you're like, wait, what did you just say? <laughs> exactly. Wait, hold on. What, what, to talk about that for a long time yeah i mean because she's she's like constantly like right from the jump like attacking like the way he looks and she's like you know is this the best you can look like those kinds of comments also this guy is gorgeous and he's standing next to ed sheeran who is apparently like what (laughs) like who's a fucking heartthrob in this alternate universe danny devito like what are we talking about Rieger. i do think coming to bed could you be shorter by any chance (laughs) they should have gone into they should have made this whole thing a comedy they should have and mckinnon would have worked and there, fucking have Will Ferrell be the guy that remembers fucking Beatles yep. songs. Yep. Like, it is such a ridiculous premise, and it should be treated like such. Yeah, I mean, and if you want to, again, like, it's all about him and Lily James. It's not really about him dealing with the music industry. No, There's, no. like, three scenes, and they play for zero laughs. Right. <laughs> This is the first one. She meets him. She yeah, actually, like, you you know, it looks so great, blah, blah, blah. But oh my God, yeah. that music, this, that, and the other thing. You need to come to America with me and I'm going to make you a huge star. Yeah. She's like, you know, you're going to come to Los Angeles. We're going to record stuff. We're going to put it out. You're going to make a bunch of money. I'm going to make a bunch of money. And that's how this is going to work. Look, Ed Sheeran just, I, I, I hate to be the one to tell you this. Ed Sheeran was so distraught about the songwriting contest. He killed himself. So the tour is over. Um, it just, it's a, uh, so we're going to go to Los Angeles. When we he, need to get out of Moscow immediately. When he heard your lyric that she was just 17, <laughs> he cried. So it was so good. And he realized you could never top it. On its face, that lyric is so good. Just that part. Well, that's my favorite part, maybe, of this whole movie is Ed Sheeran saying, like, uh, I guess I'm the Salieri. Here. Oh, I'm like, give me oh, a right, fucking oh, break. Right, oh, right. <laughs> After this contest, he's like, yeah, he's, like Steve said, he's like, there's no voting, no applause. You are Shakespeare. I am clearly Salieri. Does anyone have an electrical cord? <laughs> oh, I'm just going to have to go back to my three houses. Mo- Mozart and Salieri. Right. Yeah. Oh, Mozart. Yeah, so yeah, Mart- Mozart exists, uh-huh. but Beethoven never existed. <laughs> and when I say Maybe. that, I mean the dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no, that dog franchise? No, in this world, it's won Academy Awards. <laughs> Well, no, because in the in the original Beethoven movie, he does get shot to death by the mob, which is oh, yeah, 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 right. definitely very much on the table and in that those film. Those sequels got weird too, like Beethoven's Ninth Gate. <laughs> <laughs> Beethoven's having sex with a woman as the fucking devil comes back at the end. He's, Beethoven is transcribing ancient satanic texts. Weirdly, Roman Polanski directed all the Beethoven movies. <laughs> he never had to flee to Europe. Well, actually... Beethoven's bitter moon. Here's the thing. No Beatles, no Helter Skelter. Ooh. What does Charles Manson do in Dude, this Dude, the universe? film yesterday lives... On top of the universe of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, exactly. I think is what we're Definitely. saying. Now he's Governor Charles Manson. <laughs> Governor! <laughs> right, that's me, Charles Manson. Uh, you know, I think uh, California's got a lot of good things going for it, but you know, there's some areas we could improve, and uh, I'm your guy, Chuck Manson. And that piece of shit Jerry Brown knows what he did. <laughs> Man, it was so embarrassing when Schwarzenegger lost so badly to Charles Manson. <laughs> 
No, he's a totally normal guy, except for some reason he still has the swastika tattoo <laughs> on his forehead. Well, I mean, it is 2019. Oh, and that's it's world. Good. We could be a more responsible Republican party and not have swastikas tattooed <laughs> on our foreheads. <laughs> Uh, so very quickly, we cut to another incredibly uncomfortable moment, his goodbye party, in where he finds himself in his attic bedroom huh. with Lily James, who's wasted, mm -hmm. and she's doing this, like, why didn't you ever love me? And it's like, <laughs> it's also, on, I mean, A, it's totally on him, and A, B, you should have either made your move and gotten or gotten over it. Should have got off the pot. Exactly. It's been 10 years of this nonsense. It's and she's like, just... you didn't love me. Yeah, and she's like looking at. He's got like little sticky notes of all the song titles, uh -huh. and she's like, "Why couldn't I be in your love column?" <laughs> <laughs> And then, like, the parents intervene, like, oh, someone wants to give a toast to you. Like, oh, am I interrupting something? And this is incredibly uncomfortable. Whatever. Come back downstairs. And, like, he's like, oh, I'm so shocked by this information. I don't I don't even know what to do. And I'm like, I don't know. You're 28 years old. You should understand how to react to this. Situation. Yeah, it's like, oh, my God, someone likes, li wait, wait, wait. like, likes me. <laughs> Just make these characters 12. I oh, wait, wait, wait. You like, like me on the eve of my 30th birthday. <laughs> Oh, Lily, James, I thought you were just a figment of my imagination that I was talking to all I, the time. Let me tell you something, Chris Cabin. Way too late in this movie, and I'm talking like well after scenes where this her character has interacted with other people, I was like, is she fake? Because <laughs> I just totally forgot what was going on in the movie, and I was like, is she a figment of his imagination? Coming this summer, Lily James is the horny ghost. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. Directed by Richard Curtis. It actually makes sense. Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> you, you know, or directed uh, by Jim Belushi. Oh. <laughs> Ed Sheeran would be a horny ghost, too, with that fucking song you told me about. That's right. Smelling all, all those sheets. Smelling <laughs> sheets and stuff. What a creep. This I, is where he also has the quick line of, like, wow, I'm so stressed. Like, I picked a terrible time to stop smoking cigarettes or something. That's uh, kind of a Oh, right, yeah. Right. Like, oh, that's after he goes to L.A., actually. Yeah, I think, well, so he asks it somebody worked. for a cigarette, and like, oh, what's a cigarette? And, like, yeah. the gag... Oh, he asks Rocky. That's Rocky what it at is. the motel when right. they're in L.A., yeah. The gag every time is whenever one of these new things comes up, you Google it and nothing... And, like, a, a, a city in France shows up or something right. like that. Oh, right. So, so drop, drop Cigarette City, actually. Drop the Beatles nonsense and invent cigarettes you'd be a trillionaire yeah that's true you'd be doing so well i mean like, you'd get be the, me to north carolina immediately you would parlay that fucking beetle money you make yep. into buying a fucking tobacco farm in north carolina <laughs> yep and also the thing is like it would take people at least 20 to 30 years to realize how horrible cigarettes are oh, yeah. by that yeah. point you're in your 60s it's fine yeah, it exactly. gives a shit. yeah you could become the palpatine of earth exactly <laughs> you just and you stuff you know the lobbyists and the politicians pockets enough <clears throat> yeah, the, the cigarettes will be around forever <laughs> yeah exactly i mean like yeah it took it took really the world like 200 years to figure out how bad cigarettes were and they're so not <laughs> going anywhere buddy <laughs> no so, i mean lily james leaves and he's stuck in his room saying Oh, I kind of have to have a wank. And then his mother says, what's that? <laughs> oh, man. What's the yank? What's then, a, a wank? What's that? He goes on Pornhub and invent. Wait, no, that wouldn't exist either. No, he no. invents Pornhub. No. He invents wanking. <laughs> he invents That's wanking. lucrative. Who would, all right, out of He gets all the money from all those banner Could you ads. patent doing something to your own body? <laughs> exactly. In, this, in our universe, which yeah. is the one true real universe, yeah, who true. invented masturbation? No, because you could, you would like, it has to be called malaking now. Oh, dude. Right. <laughs> I'll tell you, there's or definitely... Jacking. No, you, no, you, no, you jack jacking. off. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> that totally checks. Getting this malak soft. <laughs> then he'd write a memoir called The Life's Wank. Right, I mean... And to answer Steve's question, obviously masturbation was invented a long time ago gotcha. by an ape-like ancestor of ours. <laughs> Sometime right? in like the 1800s, I think. Masturbeticus. <laughs> the guy who invented Coca-Cola <laughs> in the 1800s also invented masturbation. You know, I was, um, the other day I had one of those hard knobs. Oh, yes, we get those hard knobs all the time. They're terrible, terrible. You know, uh, I was fiddling with it. And uh, at the end of it, Felt pretty good. <laughs> so, I don't know. Is it something you do when you get a hard knob? Is fiddle with it. So it feels pretty good. Is that how they designed the door? So we'll put the knob in the middle just because <laughs> my knob's in the middle? <laughs> so he goes to L.A., Mm. And we see Kate McKinnon's like insane beach house that she has, and like, and she's still being this like 
mustache twirling, like, you know, you're going to have to, you're going to, you're, you're going to, do you the want biggest... the poison chalice of money and fame? <laughs> yeah. Get which, that line the fuck out of here. That's not Kate McKinnon's fault, but get that which, line the fuck out of here. Would you yeah. like me to say the subtext up front? <laughs> <laughs> It's just so bizarre. And, and he's like, he's like, I want the chalice, miss. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, whatever. And like, we cut to, this is, it's a fucking dumb montage right here. Because she's, she reveals the strategy and it's like, all right, we're going to take those songs that you recorded. We're just going to release them on the internet, mm. you know, get some buzz going. Oh, yeah, I forgot about and that. And so it's this montage of him, like, it's just the oh. actor in front of a green screen looking at the internet. And he's just watching like clicks happen and he's getting like these views and likes. I mean, all is, to carry the weight is being played. And oh. I like Danny Boyle, but this is Danny Boyle horseshit. Because yes. he, he will yes, veer into Danny Boyle horseshit. Yep. Like that scene in the beach when Leonardo DiCaprio becomes a video game. Yeah. Like he always, because <laughs> yeah. Danny Boyle is a guy that like, you know, he, he was a young director and made all these like really exciting young movies. Mm, yeah. And he got older and he's like, well, I have to like always stay relevant. And like, so he like this is like him being like this is the Instagram this is what it's like man and it's yeah. like well, when it's all Danny coming at you at once and it's identical to the scene in fucking Emoji Movie where they go to see YouTube it's like oh, that's exa- absolutely true it's the same exact <laughs> fucking scene oh dude what if Danny Boyle saw the Emoji Movie and ripped it off <laughs> oh f- <laughs> oh that's uh, my number four favorite movie of the decade uh, <laughs> Emoji Movie. Oh, you know, I was watching uh, yesterday and I noticed uh, some similarities between this film and the film where I did the voice of poop. (laughs) Does anyone remember when I did the poop emoji? Yeah, they both stunk. (laughs) Um, Also, like the weird thing about the whole premise of this movie, wouldn't you live in existential terror that you were in a parallel universe. Yes. That's like, what I'm yeah. talking about. Like, that's why this movie has no fucking teeth on it, dude. Yeah. It's like a 90-year-old man gumming an apple. <laughs> like, it just has nothing. And that's, I'm, I'm sitting here watching this movie, waiting for him to go fucking crazy. Exactly. You would be like, oh, fuck. Hey, when is it going to happen again? When do I leap back? Yes, yep. yes, which never happens, never. which is insane. I know it's a spoiler. We're jumping ahead, but like, they this reality never undoes itself. Yes, which it's makes crazy. no sense. Well, and there's never any explanation, no gin or anything yeah, like tell that. Tell me where what's where Snoke came from. It would kind of make sense, <laughs> even in a liar liar kind of way, if he like blows on a fucking can. He's like, oh, I wish I was the biggest musician in the world. Yep, because that would make like it would give it something. Because that's well, what this movie. This movie is essentially like a magic body swap, wish making, whatever the yeah. fuck kind of movie. Right. And sometimes the the thing with those movies is that world building is usually where you get your big laughs. Is like yes. exploring the world. This has no interest in the world nope. other than how it like makes his life get better. Yeah. And like there is another thing you could do here where like now musicians all of them, popular musicians say, wait, tend to have their songs written by other people. Mm-hmm. There's a connection here where you might be able to talk about something in the industry here. He, but fuck it. Yeah, he could have just written songs for Ed Sheeran. Yeah. That would make a lot Just of sense. Just send him the long and winding road. Yep. You don't think he's going to pay for that? Yeah, like, this one's yours, buddy. Like, take it. And that's your that's your career. Or something. You know what I mean? But there's nothing. <laughs> there's, like, this montage of him watching these clicks and shit. And then so he can't remember the lyrics to Eleanor Rigby. is like, Ugh. his big stumping thing. So he's he comes up with this idea. He's like, hey, Kate McKinnon. I know this movie just got to Los Angeles and we had like half a scene here, uh, but I got to go back to England because I have to go to Liverpool. Yeah. You know, the fucking sight of it all, man. <laughs> you know, the ground zero of Beatlemania to just like look at the landmarks and I guess be inspired to remember the lyrics. I suppose. Right. Because it- Eleanor Rigby has a headstone there and he walks yep. through the church. There's an the old field. Field. Yeah. Right. And there's Abbey an old Road. Brit- and I guess because he wants, if he's going to premiere those songs, he needs to have some type of connection to the place. He can't just. Can't just sing about a random thing on Google Maps, I guess. I guess so, yeah. But then he starts being followed by a British woman. Yes. An older British woman who is like, I think I was, I thought she was going to stab him. Yeah, I thought so too. Well, because she and the Russian guy are the two most fucking interesting characters in the movie. And I want their movie. And like, you keep like, oh shit, what is going on? Maybe she knows. Maybe she's going to kill him. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe there's something going on. Like, you know, maybe she, maybe she is like the, 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 
the ruler of this reality, right. the architect, or as you should. mad scientist. She, yeah, or like she knocks him out and drags him to the master, and the master is the ruler of this reality. It's Ringo Starr on a, on a, <laughs> oh, fucking, shit. On a throne. Fuck. Right? Yeah. And then he has to fight all of his royal guards. Well, well, well. <laughs> yes. Looks like somebody's been having some fun. He's, oh, I think you'll find it's quite operational. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody thought I'd be the last one. But I am the last one. <laughs> Dude, well, they go to his uh, his fucking hideout or whatever, and he's like, "Welcome to the octopus's garden." <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, young Jack Malik, you will die. <laughs> <laughs> Starts striking it with purple lightning, as but he, it's out of his fucking little circular sunglasses. Yeah, absolutely, as he's killing him, he keeps going, "Peace and love, <laughs> peace and love." It's how I sign off all my tweets and how I kill off all my enemies. Like, I, I see more of like him as the architect from The Matrix. Yeah. And he has all the TV. TVs and it's just all the movies he's appeared in. Here's where I was a caveman. Yeah, I was the Pope in Listomania. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. right. That over there's me Simpsons appearance. I got fly the damn. <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, so he's uh, he goes there. Oh, Lily James shows up. They have this drunken night where they're getting fucking slam shit wrecked. Dude, it, it's one of those things where I was like already feeling their hangover. I was Absolutely. like, what the fuck are you like? They're closing down this bar. And what is it? He's he they order or whatever because she's like yeah. last call. And, and he's like, oh, we could get out of here. And she's like. What if instead we just sat here and drank brandy for the rest of the night? I was like, oh, my head. My God. <laughs> brandy with fries. You are asking for it. <laughs> and they wind up in his hotel room. Making like, out hard. They're on the bed. And again, the thing is, like, there's this really cool, and it's good Danny Boyle directing. The, the TV is, like, white because, like, whatever they paused it on or whatever. Mm, yep. And, like, he's cutting between those two things. And, like, when they're making out, they're in front of this weird white space. That's really it, yeah. And it's interesting looking. Like, it, a lot of things in this yeah. movie are totally interesting looking. It's why it's almost even more frustrating that these are in this movie because yes. you're just being reminded of like shit he's capable of and, and then lily james separates is like no 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 we have to get the three seashells first <laughs> <laughs> she she also has some kind of a vibe in this movie it's like no you have to leave your career if you want to be with me it's well it's really bizarre because in the in the beginning he's like i don't want to do this anymore i just want to be a teacher because this career and she's like, no you're a genius and then when he exhibits genius the character changes totally and she's like well, because you're so famous, you would never want to be with me. It's like, well, why don't they make out here? And, you know, also, all, after all that brandy, nothing is going to happen anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so right. you might as well, like, make out, go to bed, and then, like, tomorrow you get breakfast, and you sort of plan out, like, we're going to be in a long-distance relationship because this is important to me. Like, it's so easy to do. But he is incapable of doing all of that, and I think her points at, at this point, juncture of her life and dealing with this dude mm -hmm. are totally valid she's like look now you're this global superstar i just want to be this math teacher dude and it's and she's very realistic about it she's like it will not work yeah and you mm. missed your chance you had 20 years that's fair. i've been i've always been standing also, in your doorway you know she's also like i guess mad because she's got all these songs about other women like oh. michelle and all the oh, all these it. beatles songs right. that mention other women's names but it's like you know he's not hanging out with other women. Where's he meeting them? Costco. <laughs> <laughs> this is where she has the uh, he has the line about like oh there was that one girl in Moscow. Yeah. Like, Fucking bullshit. <laughs> she touched Didn't my she touched my jeans for five minutes. That's second base, right? <laughs> Look, all right. You know what? I'll, I'll, I'll level. With you. I hooked up with Edward Snowden in Moscow. Okay. <laughs> it was fucking great night. I regret nothing. It was the most passionate night of my life, and I re and I just. I miss him. I love the smell of your your you on my sheets. We made encrypted love. <laughs> Jack's getting his fucking clothing together. You're leaving <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, let's try to see you crack this one, Glenn Greenwald. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure you don't have my number. Let me give it to you. Make sure you have it. <laughs> you want? You sure? You can my phone out? number changes every eight hours. Listen, I'm going to give you a Tor server where you can get in touch with me. Why don't you just hang out for the day and watch me fi finish all these Rubik's Cubes? <laughs> Here's my uh, WhatsApp name and my signal name. Just, you know, keep everything under low. 
So what this movie starts doing around here in in Liverpool is when he's getting to all of these landmarks, you get these yeah. big dumbass letters that say like Strawberry Fields, Ugh. you know, Danny uh, Boyle horseshit. Sorry, right? But so so it's happening for that, and you're like, okay, whatever. But then he goes back to L.A. because Kate McKinnon says before he leaves, like, oh, there's this big marketing meeting you have to be at or whatever, yeah. where we're gonna like talk about the rollout of your album. So he goes back to L.A. and then all of a sudden it's just like L.A. in big letters, yeah. and you're like, oh, now you're just doing it for this too? <laughs> yeah. But why did you start like an hour into this movie? Did I do that for Moscow or my nuts? Oh, maybe they did. Maybe it's a blicky. I don't know. I don't remember. I really don't remember. But any big letter shit like that. No, oh, and also like, I'll be able to figure it out <laughs> when he's in this boardroom <laughs> full of like nothing marketing people led by the, the great Lamorne Morris. By the way, and there is a mention about the media strategy here that yeah. you know because he, he's going to go on James Corden yeah. and then blah blah blah. <laughs> but eventually, it's leading up to a big night on Thursday Night Live, dude. And uh, what are we doing? Because he's night like, Live. it's like Colbert, Kimmel, Cor- you know, James Corden, and then. Right into Thursday Night Live, and I'm like, <sighs> license it. Yeah, Ju- you're saying fucking well, no. It's, no, it's, it's the, the parallel time, universe. Yes. Oh, that's what it's Lord supposed Michaels to be. Lord Michaels didn't get hit on the head and came up oh, with the idea. Oh, he never yeah. had the, or the flux capacitor. I was standing <laughs> on my toilet, hanging a clock, and I thought about Saturday Night we're, Live. We're going to start with Late Night on, with Paul Giamatti. <laughs> <laughs> And we're going to do the late show with Nick Nolte. <laughs> See, that's actually a great point. Why are all the late night hosts the same? They should have swapped out somebody. That would have been at least kind of funny. Well, that's the one good thing in the trade of not having the Beatles. That also cancels out James Corden's existence. Or like, just say like the Tonight Show with Conan O'Brien. Or yeah, something. That'd, be, yes. that'd be funny. That's a joke with some fucking teeth on it, not yeah. for nothing. And also like... I don't think Saturday Night Live would have existed without cigarettes. I just, you know, that that early cast, like of Bill Murray, not. Gilda Radner, fucking yeah. uh, uh, Garrett Morris. You're telling me those people would have made that show if cigarettes didn't exist? Yeah. I don't think so. No fucking way, <laughs> wait, dude. Wait, you still have the cocaine? Yeah, we're on. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, let's, yeah, let's go. <laughs> uh, but yes, and also, it is kind of funny that James Corden is in this movie, but they very much position him in the film rightfully as like, well, he's the first step you have to get to to become right. Like it's just like it's the easy one. Get that out of the way. <laughs> first, James Corden, then Carson Daly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the, but in this marketing meeting, like everyone's, oh my god, this this album is going to be the biggest fucking thing in the world because yep. all of your songs are great. Blah blah blah. We uh, and you all and like one of these is plenty, but they do like four of them. Where it's like all of your album titles were so bad. Uh, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Heart Club Band. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> wait, the White Album. Well, that's got diversity issues. <laughs> and you know the fucking well, self-titled. I mean, all these old people are slapping their papery right. knees in but, the audience. <laughs> yeah, but the fact that the album titles and images that he wants to associate with them are held under such scrutiny. But the songs aren't. Yep. Exactly. There's fucking yep. diversity issues in those songs. There's issues with everything in those songs. The fucking 17 year old line, I can't get past it. The USSR, like, 1960, what, what? whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> 2019. It's, and well, it, I want them to change the lyric. Like, I, I was like waiting for more, like, the dude thing where he's just uh, like, oh, so <laughs> instead of hey, Jude, it's hey, dude, because that was an Ed Sheeran suggestion. Yeah, which, that's that's how Ed Sheeran would have uh, contributed to the Beatles in this world. So, does that mean hey, dude, the Nickelodeon show doesn't exist? Oh, great oh, question. God. Wow, man. And then if that's the case, whatever happened to Mr. Ernst? <laughs> <laughs> well, she I was just asking ourselves that now. <laughs> Well, she was just barely legal, and uh, I did stuff. I'm sorry. (laughs) Well, great song, mate. (laughs) The song lyrics are printed on a fucking uh, iOS notepad note that's been turned into an Instagram apology. (laughs) Might as well be. And yeah, so like, yeah, and they're like, oh, your your album will be called One Man Only, which I guess sort of even more makes him feel guilty that he's taking credit. I don't know. For four men's work. Yeah, yeah. but they didn't, but he didn't, they didn't, it didn't happen in this universe. I don't understand the guilt, personally, like. Because it's like, I, think I mean, he's pa- lying, so he's he living does, a lie, well, he that's a like problem. He has a dream that he's oh, on James Corden, and like. The, uh, when you have a dream when you're on James Corden, that's called a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> so he, it's, it's. <laughs> James Great Corden's point. all like, 
Oh, just by yourself? Are you sure? Because backstage, we have four men who say you ripped off their obscure oh, band, right. yeah. the Beatles. So the idea that the band, the Beatles, could have existed mm. at, and never got successful is an interesting idea that is not explored beyond this dream. That would be great if it was, I mean, look, it was the four, because later we do get Robert Carlyle as John Lennon. <sighs> get Spoilers! The whole, get the whole train spotting crew to play yes. the Beatles. You get Robert Carlyle as John Lennon. <laughs> I got a lust for a life. <laughs> you no. get uh, Ewan Bremner as Ringo. You get, um, <laughs> I guess you'd get Johnny Lee Miller as Paul. Or would it or be? George? Hasn't he played Paul McCartney? In something? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Even McGregor's got more of the head for it, right? Yeah, it's a, t- mm. a toss-up. Who should be George and who should mm. be Paul? You, McGregor, or Johnny sure. Miller? In the court in Nightmare, by the way, he only says McCartney and Star, uh, and then they cut to a fucking dumbass like shot of the audience, and you just see two dudes like just the legs yeah. of the two of them walk out like it's a fucking showdown at the OK Corral, <laughs> and then they just cut away from it like. I'm sorry, if if Robert Carlyle at the end of this movie is playing a 78-year-old John Lennon, which, woof, <laughs> have two guys playing yeah. late 70s Ringo and I Paul. I feel like they ask them to be in this movie, and they're like, absolutely not. Because that they're was living, I think, well, George is not. Yeah. And then you don't yeah. want just John and George. Or, or P- Paul and Ringo, rather. Paul and Ringo, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. I, yeah. I guess because you... That's another, like, you get this once. Yeah. So you can't have other actors doing that if you want to save the Lennon thing. Yeah. But to your point about them playing themselves, I was wondering in this movie, while watching this movie, like, what, like, do the two of them even know this movie exists? The, like, the, I, I read that they that Danny Boyle got the blessing in quotation marks of the, the check remain. cleared <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah, the music totally. rights on this thing, oh, right? must have been yeah, it's, very it's, expensive. It's like, yeah. hey, do you want more millions of dollars, Paul McCartney? He's like, sure, why not? <laughs> beep, beep, what is beep, with beep, the Ed yeah. Sheeran connection? Did he produce this film or something? It I think seems it's just, like it's a vanity project of his. I think he, the thing is like, just he's the example of like. Major pop They're massive. Star. I mean, because he he is he's massive. Yeah, and that's actually, like you know he was the second choice actually. Oh really? What well, was who's the first choice? Chris Martin of Coldplay. Uh, <laughs> that would actually make a little more sense yeah, anyway. Like just because he's I bigger, I wouldn't recognize who he is. But no, yeah. but like is, that, is Ed Sheeran not bigger than Coldplay? I mean, I, mean, I don't at this know. point probably not. Only one of them has played a Super Bowl halftime show. <laughs> exactly. Which, I mean, Coldplay's put out like four humongous like platinum selling records Ed See, Sheeran I think has is, two uh-huh. Coldplay is he's also been around for less time yeah. I, I can think of and remember like like Ed Sheeran's like a like a Bruno Mars figure to me because I'm like I That's guess they exist right. yeah I mean yeah. I don't know personally yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm sure old. they've it's done a song us. together we're not it's not just question about being too old it's a question about having taste <laughs> <laughs> and I apologize to anyone listening that likes music that I don't <laughs> Uh, yeah, so he has that nightmare. It, it, then it's so, yeah, this is, he's in the studio. He's trying to finish these songs. This is the Ed Sheeran Hey Dude. He freaks out on everybody because yeah. he gets a, call, a phone call from Lily James to be like, oh, hey, you working on your album? That's cool. Just wanted to say, I'm dating that dude Gavin from that shitty recording studio 100 years ago. I just discovered sex and it's fantastic. <laughs> you know, I, I realize that I don't have to ruin my life waiting for you to figure it out. I'm a beautiful woman. And whoops, everyone was knocking on my door. Well, I guess yeah. it was just Gavin. Well, yeah, yeah. Gavin. <laughs> Muncie string bean there. So he decides, like, where are we going to have this record release party? This is where you're pushing right to the end of the film, yeah. pretty much. When are we gonna, what are we going to do about this record release party? And he has the idea, we'll do it at this, uh, like, hotel by the sea that he and Lily James used to go to. We'll There's do it in the road. There. Well, yeah, uh-huh. exactly. Famous Beatles song about having sex in public. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, look, you, you're fucking in the road. You're fucking in the octopus's garden, dude. Yeah. It's like, man, it's all sorts of exhibitionist shit with those guys. It's true. And he's doing a <laughs> press conference, this crazy press conference, which we haven't done for a musician in about 25 years. But which, the Beatles used to do it, so that's like why it's happening in this movie. But again, if you're doing a modern media strategy, you wouldn't do this. But sure. Yeah. Uh, and in the press conference he sees in the back, it's the, the older British woman and... The Russian guy, and they're holding up a yellow submarine. And he's like, <gasps> and it's kind of like there. People are yelling out questions, and you hear one of the two of them says, 
who's your favorite John Paul Georgia Ringo? Oh, and right. he's like, what? We what? And like mm-hmm. the crowd gets too. It's so. It, this scene the is old weird. Lady pulls out a gun <laughs> and says, starts shooting him. What if this sure was thought, for Rocky Raccoon? <laughs> I thought it was going that way. Like yes. the Psycho Beetle fans yes. of yesteryear. That right. would be like, oh my God, you stole our music or what? You stole right. my st- Oh my God. <laughs> if if John Lennon shows up to his door, like, <laughs> you stole my story. And he's wearing a hat. <laughs> yeah. I think John Lennon movie. was photographed wearing that hat that John Turturro <laughs> wears in that movie. <laughs> you stole my story, mate. It's never explained why we come to find out that this older British woman and this Russian guy also have the same condition mm-hmm. that they remember the Beatles and no one else does. Right. So they and confront like, him after the concert. And they're, they're just like, well, oh, thank you. Thanks for the songs. And that's what that's it's it's an interesting. We thing. love you, Jack it, Malik. If we, <laughs> you're the best person on earth. If we were watching their movie, though, yeah, th- like the story of them like using the internet to find each other. Like, does yeah. anyone out there remember these songs or whatever? Yeah. And then they get to him, and it is kind of interesting that they're like, "No, we're not mad. Like, we're glad that these stories, or these songs, are out here now, and we can listen to them." And like, I'm sitting here watching it, and realizing, like, no. The movie is the two of them. Mm-hmm. This because it reminds me of like a, it's like Twilight Zone, X Files, yeah, sure. like weird sort of sci fi type stuff, which I think Danny Boyle has obviously played in well before and would have excelled here. But it's like well, you just had to watch this shit ass rom com the whole time. We're so happy to have these songs. I mean, they're a bit rubbish as compared to the originals. Yeah, I, I mean, will be honest with you. They they kind of suck. Well, it's kind of <laughs> great though. They do say stuff like that though, because she's like, "You got some of the lyrics wrong," you know, yeah. and it's kind of funny. I, I really like the harmonies. Couldn't you have like more people in the <laughs> band singing together? What about Hey? Dude, oh yeah, that's it. <laughs> I actually like uh, it, uh, one of the you like. Hey, dude, no, one of the <laughs> hey, dude, yippee kai, what <laughs> like the cowboys say? <laughs> no, but like the performance he gives on the rooftop is very angsty and anxious. I forget which song he's singing. Help. Uh, He's help. Doing yeah, he's help. Doing help. Yeah. Well, and I'm it's... glad they got Jack Malik back together for that fucking rooftop <laughs> concert. Well, that's like the whole thing, right? Yeah. Like the rooftop for the Beatles was their last concert. Yeah. This is his first concert. And, but I think it's like Stupid. it's it's a Sorry. it's a well filmed, <laughs> well acted performance, but it doesn't really mean anything. No, because this is the only moment because he's he's like literally screaming help me into the microphone. Yeah, yeah. And you're like this is this is the movie, yes. like him going crazy, spiraling out of control down this but, rabbit hole. And, but they have done no work to earn what he's doing that, there. No, that's what I'm saying. That's why it's all the more frustrating that it's still left in the movie. Because yeah. up until that point, he's been more or less kind of fine with it. He's just bombing that he's not with Lily James. Mm-hmm. Oh, boo-hoo. I have a bunch of money, and this girl didn't fuck me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Help me if you can. <laughs> so no, troubling. There is a funny gag in the lead-up to him going on the roof where the dude Rocky is like, you know, I'm standing oh, yeah. in the presence of greatness. You're about to make history. I'm honored to open this door for you. Just this huge buildup. And he opens the door, and it's just the fire escape. Kind of a funny joke. It's I, That dude's really funny in this movie. And, like, so... She kind of, you know, is trying, like, right before his performance, she's going to talk to him, but then the boyfriend comes in, and he realizes it's way too late, and she just pretty much says it's way too late. Yeah. and For the second time in the movie, by yes, the way. Yes, exactly. And he's like, well, yeah. now I have to do, uh, oh, that's right, the, the lady, yes, yes. the British lady is like, hey... I think there's somebody you might want to see. And uh oh, it's John Lennon because he wasn't fucking assassinated. Isn't that cool? <sighs> That's Man, awesome. This is just, it's. <sighs> In a darker movie, mm-hmm. you'd be like, wow, that's really something. In this saccharine movie, you're like, well, that's cruel. It, it, yeah, it that's is. totally yeah. fucking cruel. And his whole thing, like John Lennon's like, yeah, I was a bit of a genius, but decided to fuck off. Go <laughs> fishing for 50 years, and just, now I'm going to die. Just been drinking tea. Like, that's what, what I've been doing. What, like, what is this weird hermit life? Well, I guess the idea is it's like... um, 
the point of the movie is that fame is inherently bad. Right. So he says he, that it's like it's not about being successful. Happiness does not equal success. That's and it. therefore, he was able to live this peaceful, lovely life without the the devil's due of fame, and he wasn't shot by Mark David Chapman. Uh, right. When the blackout so, happened, Catcher in the Rye also disappeared. That's yeah. what I was going to say, Kevin. <laughs> the only reason he actually wasn't assassinated had nothing to do with the fame. It's because Salinger never wrote that. J.D. Salinger but became a chef. The theme of the movie is if you have an artistic genius of some kind, don't use it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, much. Sit don't make money cabin. with it. Yeah, don't make money. Sit in a fucking cabin and shut up. <laughs> make so a that, bunch of paintings that no one's ever going to see. So us mediocre artists can take all the benefits. Yeah. Ooh, Ed Sheeran <laughs> counting money. <laughs> The I love uh, that the boat it says imagine on it. Did anyone notice? No, that? I did oh, not oh, notice. Oh, that. Like sitting on a boat, like it's up, up, upside down, up overturned kind yeah. of a thing, and like he's giving this speech about like, oh, Darf. And, and he's not good in this movie either, Robert Carlyle. And he doesn't really look that. I mean, like I guess he could look like an older John Lennon. Uh, you, sure. you put that like stringy mullet wig on him yeah. and put a hat over it, and he's got the glasses mm. on. It's like they did. The bare minimum. Exactly. He's not sounding like him, really. On a VHS transfer, he looks like John <laughs> Lennon. 4K, no, sir. <laughs> You're totally right, Kevin. And he's just like, yeah, you know, you just got to live your life. Two things, if I could give you advice, a strange guy that's in my house. By yeah. the way, are you here to kill me? No, okay, cool. Uh, is to... What do you read? <laughs> find <laughs> play, a play with, play friend, with you... Wait a minute, you mean wait, Salinger's Catcher? What? No, you mean a catcher at Yankee Stadium, right? <laughs> that was the book Salinger wrote. Actually, I'm into John Grisham. <laughs> First off, get that knob out. <laughs> Teach you how... I mean, you should... Jack should spread the gift. Anyway. The gospel. The gospel of Jack. <laughs> but he's like, the two things I'll tell you is find a woman that you love, tell her that you love her, and be honest always. This Man. is just like basic, like, you know the secret to life, son? Being a halfway cognizant adult. <laughs> maybe maybe I mean, talking to a woman that you like. <laughs> I don't know. Try that. It's just bonkers that this movie creates a world in where, incredibly, John Lennon, is still alive. Yeah. And the words you have him say are garbage advice in some C grade fucking romantic comedy. Absolutely. It's disgusting. It's disgraceful. <laughs> it, 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 it is. No, it is. It is. It truly fucking is. It'd be cool if he like sang a song. It's like, you know, I always wanted to like oh. maybe he gives him the words for Eleanor Rigby or well, something. Like Yeah. Well, what I mean, the whole re- the, the 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 note of genius they give him as the, he's got like some Shell Silverstein cartoons oh, on yeah. his fucking desk somewhere <laughs> that he's been working on. What I did see those <laughs> is he like a fucking <laughs> Is he like, did he create Doonesbury in this universe? <laughs> so it's like he's not he's not a music guy. In yeah, the, in he's this just world. an artist. He I was wondering if those doodles in the foreground, though, may have been probably looking like in a style. Because I'm sure Lennon's got doodles and whatnot. Of course, yeah. If you looked that up. Uh, that was the one thought I had. Yeah, pro- that, you're probably right. That's probably because all those people, if you're that creative, you always kind of draw pretty well or yeah. at least interestingly. Like Jerry Garcia was a great yeah. artist in that way, too. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of curious if the yeah. end of this movie would be amazing is if, like, uh, you know, during the montage where he's, like, all of his songs are blowing up, you just cut to, like, some uh, New York City uh, apartment, and this guy is just sitting with his girlfriend. He's in his, like, mid-60s, and he gets, he, he, like, perks up, and it's Mark David Chapman because he's been uh, activated. Oh, it's nice. like, oh, shit. Like, he's just lived this totally normal life, and he's like, oh. <gasps> I know what I have to do. And he, she just like walks out of the apartment like a robot. And the girl's like, what are you doing? I have, to go, I have to go to a Barnes and Noble. <laughs> and then the rest of the movie is like him getting ready to kill this Excuse guy. Excuse me. Are you John Lennon? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I keep going back in time to kill John Lennon and the timeline keeps changing. Are you Jack Malik? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Blam. Like, it would make... That would be such a great end to this movie. Fuck, that would be pretty cool, dude. Just Arnold bursting <laughs> it. <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah, the Beatles wrote that. Yeah. <laughs> Good song. But instead, he's inspired by this Lennon thing to come clean. And he asks so Ed, Ed Sheeran, like, they're best buds. Ed Sheeran hates this dude. Yeah. And Ed, Ed Sheeran's like, you ruined my life. You showed me what a fucking shit-ass artist I was. And he's like, hey, Ed, can I... Can I do a couple songs at 
not before your concert, <laughs> after your concert at well, Wembley Jack, Stadium. <laughs> Jack, if it gets me more scenes in the third act of this movie, buddy, <laughs> you got it. Well, Jack, all I did is compare myself to F. Murray fucking Abraham. <laughs> I'll get over that nice and quick. Let's go to concert. <laughs> So yet, yeah, uh, uh, Ed Sheeran has uh, is playing a sold out show at Wembley Stadium, mm-hmm. uh, and then yeah, it's like, well, good night, everybody. Also, stick around for this dude who's way more famous than I am now. Exactly. Okay, could I do the songs with you? No, you can't. <laughs> no. no, you can just fucking go backstage and go right to hell. How about that? <laughs> Thanks for the favor, though. Really appreciate it. And so he goes out. He plays like five Beatles tunes. Uh, and he's like telling Rocky, like, get ready. It's going to happen like right at the end of the last song or something. And it's very important to point out that at this Ed Sheeran concert in the audience at Wembley is, is Lily James, uh-huh. uh, her character Ellie or whatever. And then, uh, this dude Gavin. Yep. They're together still. He's like, you know, got his arms around her or whatever. Like they're dancing to the songs and shit. It's just, it's very important to remember that he is right next to her. Yes. But then the Rocky grabs her and brings her backstage. I know. But yeah. it's important oh, yeah. to remember <laughs> that that dude is there okay. in the audience and they are still a couple oh, at for the sure. time of this concert. Oh, dude, he, his, his last act, Jack's heroic last act, is to cuck the fuck out of this kid. This is the greatest cuckening. <laughs> Because he brings this girl backstage and he's like, all right, Rocky, like turn the camera on. And then she's on this fucking screen and he lays it all out there. He admits that he ripped off the four Beatles. He gives them all the songwriting credit. And then he's like, and I've always loved you. I'll always love this whole thing. And this dude is just in the crowd getting cocked by in front of 10,000 yeah. people. It's like, imagine if like you're, you know, you and your wife go see Elvis Presley and Elvis at the end is just like, hey, I'll fuck your wife. I'll fuck her real good. And, uh, you gotta, I'll give you gotta, it all up for her. Yeah, you got a lip dick, motherfucker. He's, and the way he says, one of the lines is he goes, I want to thank Ellie yeah. for her love. Yeah. And this dude is just turning to sand. Okay. Not in this movie because it's all so sweet. Also, at similar at the same time, he says he's like, he doesn't even say I'm gonna give him the songwriting credit, like the you know, financial standpoint. He's just like, I didn't write these songs. The world owns these songs. So as of right now, I'm putting all of these songs on the internet. And you cut to some computer upload fucking device Dude, thing. Rocky, who uh, in the previous sequence couldn't find the correct door to the stage, in this scene is operating this iPad where it's like, camera, go. Lights, there. Songs, released. <laughs> I'm no, Jack be... Malik and I invented BitTorrent as well. <laughs> it should be Snowden. You sure you want to do this, Jack? <laughs> There's no going back from this, buddy. If I hit, Here it comes. If I hit send, it's going to be everywhere. We're going to have to pull you through the back door of a hotel. <laughs> Don't worry, I got a lot of experience I, doing that. I, I know a guy who can help us. His name's Kim.com. <laughs> uh, yep, this is the President Barack Obama. Uh, fugitive Jack Malik. Still out there. Uh, Took uh, government songs. <laughs> Gave them uh, to the world for free. Uh, nobody Drone. should get a free song. Drone strike. Wembley Stadium. <laughs> Gotta stop it. But the thing is also, like, guess what? All songs are for free on the internet. Yeah. Everyone owns all songs yeah. on the it's internet if you, if you want to. Or, yeah. I mean, it's 2020 now, yes. but this film takes place in 2019. Correct. So uh, just, I don't know what he uploaded or whatever. Like it's yeah, his wanking I, video. <laughs> <laughs> and also, we should mention that film villain Kate McKinnon Jesus. is like flipping out. There's no! a gag where she's like getting lost, like running, yeah. like in the back hallways yeah. of the auditorium, like yes. trying to find the stage or whatever. And it's like, give up, movie. Like she's not a part of this anymore. She says at some point, like you're betraying money. I think that's her exact yes, line. Something like, like that. Yeah. Right. What a yank thing to say. It Am is. I right, my fellow Brits? <laughs> but so like Elle and him meet up at the basement or wherever they're making out, and then Gavin shows up. He's like, huh. And then of course, of fucking course, there has to be this other gorgeous <laughs> woman yep. you've never seen before. It's just like, you're kind of cute. Everything's going to work out okay. You're, you can't even be mean enough to let a cuck happen. Exactly. <laughs> Get that noose off that doorknob, cutie. <laughs> to be fair to this terribly stupid movie, 
that girl is her roommate. Oh, okay. We've, we've met her before. Got it, got it, movie. got it. Oh, that's right. Uh, but yeah, but, but it is a thing where it's like, don't worry, you're not going to be heartbroken for long, Gavin. Look, there's another one right here. So it this, would be one. The, the one shitty thing he does in the movie can't be shitty. And also, it'd be one thing if you just saw her like make eyes at Gavin. Yes. And that's it. But in the last scene, you have yep. to see them together, like arm over the Absolutely, other. Absolutely, like, dude. Because we're all happy as fuck at this point. So then, <sighs> so there's, there's, then we just cut to an Ed Sheeran music video mm-hmm. oh. because they go back to like her apartment or whatever. Yeah. Haven't you done enough to me, Danny Boyle? <laughs> You have and, to do this. And they're like making out all over the house. They finally get down to fucking all during an Ed Sheeran song playing. And you know what? I had to fucking shazam it because I didn't <laughs> even know. I was like, I'm guessing this is Ed Sheeran, but just to double check. Is this the, the Ed- penguin song again? <laughs> it the- should have been the, a fully produced penguin song. The end of this movie should be him going down on her and mm-hmm. like and fireworks. Right. Exactly. Fucking fireworks <laughs> coming off his face. Fucking finally! <laughs> Wait, what are you doing? <laughs> oh shit! I just invented cunnilingus. <laughs> uh, actually, it's Google's called cunnilingus. <laughs> it's nothing. Now, uh, this is now known as jackalingus. <laughs> <laughs> but know. even more insultingly, the movie ends with like he's like, "Oh, I just feel like Harry Potter who defeated Voldemort," and yep. she's like, "What are you talking about?" And oh. it's here we go again. Yeah, exactly, dude. There's a pretty okay montage of him playing. What song is he playing at the end? Obla Dee, Obla Dee. Oh, yeah, and it, 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 and it looks good, and it's like their life together. They, yeah, they yeah, have yeah. a kid at some point, and it's like they they're both it. teachers. It's all these kids. It's a, it's a, Again, it's a really well-made montage, but yes, the stinger the stinger yes. scene is crazy because the, the way to end this movie would be, I feel like Harry Potter, and she goes, who? And he goes, oh, no, and she goes, I'm just kidding. I'm fucking with you. You know what I mean? Like, that's <laughs> fine. Right, right. That yeah, actually yeah. If it's revealed to be a joke, that would be kind of because he has to tell her like. By the way, I, and also like, what does she think? Like, wait, so I'm living in a wrong. I have wrong memories. Do you have wrong <laughs> memories? Like, exactly. Like, wait a second. So in your world, there's mm. these a box with like twenty little sticks, in it, <laughs> and you put one in your mouth and light it on fire and put smoke into your and body. They- I- I think this is the man in the high castle type of thing. Yeah. This, they're living in like the Nazis won the war. That's why there's no Beatles. That makes sense. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, this it is a, it's a really good montage of just like that's he's, what he does. He's well. singing the song with the kids. You just see what their life is. Yes. Gavin and this roommate are now together happily. Of course, Jesus. the parents are proud of them. Every everybody wins the day. Yeah. yeah. But then it's just fucking directed by Danny Boyle, and there's no undoing of any of it. And you're no, like, no. these movies undo the thing. Yes. That's you can't, a- it's not, you're not like breaking any new ground by not doing that. Yeah, you're I- not finishing your story. Oh, okay, so honey, um, all right. So you, you know Pepsi? It's that, <laughs> but the same, and it's more popular. Um, it's red. Uh, the can- There's polar bears that sell it. Um, <laughs> at Christmas time. I, 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 uh, that, I don't know, honey. There's a store. There was a store at some point. There's the, it comes in cherry, vanilla, cherry, vanilla. Oh, okay, so there's a band that comes like 25 years after that Beatles thing that I keep telling you about. And they're not as good, and like both guys are assholes, but they they had like one or two good albums, <laughs> and they're still assholes. They yeah, continue they're, they're, to be assholes, and they hate each other. Yeah. Too. They're brothers. It's weird. <laughs> what what would be, like the the economy of Atlanta is then just the MCU now that <laughs> Coca Cola is gone. You're right. All right, honey. Um, so there's this book series, right? And it, it was for children. It's, it's good, actually. The, the book series is good. But, like, every time something happens in politics, people try and relate it to it for no reason. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand, like... Like, literally every bad person ever is just called the bad person from this book. <laughs> I don't know also, how, how I mean, to put it. And, and, like, this person wrote it, and it was, like, this triumphant story of, like, a single mother overcoming adversity and becoming this billionaire. But she's also a huge piece of shit. <laughs> she's a massive piece of shit. Every year, it seems, she just finds <laughs> new ways to f- have people hate her. And I don't I don't understand it either, sweetheart. I'm just trying to explain to you the story of this Harry Potter business. She told people to vote for the Lib Dems. I mean, it's a real fucking pain. I'm, I'm going to be honest. Shit show. Maybe my world is better. <laughs> And the other thing is, too, you can still have that same montage with the Beatles existing. 
because he's just now the the teacher at the school yes. who's the cool guy that can play Beatles songs at, at the assembly. Like it doesn't he matter. Was hit by the bus. He's in a coma. Yes. He has this prolonged dream, and he realizes that money and fame isn't what he should be seeking. Exactly. That's the other thing, dude. He either wakes up in a hospital bed mm-hmm. or the twist that I wrote way up in my notes that turned out to be wrong was he's just fucking dead. Because <laughs> this dude gets railed by that bus, I, I, man. I would have hoped for a Jacob's Ladder ending. They just pull the sheet over. Well, that, that was John Lennon's ghost. Like, yes, yeah. he's, he's like trying to let him... Jack, I need to let you know you're dead now. Right. You need to move on from this Oh, dude, place. at the beach scene? Oh, happens? definitely. Yes, dude. Twisty shit. Dude. Danny Aiello comes out to tell him. <laughs> oh. R.I.P. <laughs> Great actor. Force ghost of Danny Aiello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and whatever. At least the movie has the fucking decency to, like, end with an actual Beatles song just playing over the credits, yes. which is nice. Is it Obla Di Obla Da again? I, I don't remember. It's end on. It's one of them. They all blend together at a certain point. Yeah, and honestly, the only thing I got out of this movie was like, it just made me want to listen to real Beatles songs, yes. which I haven't done in a while, so I'm like, eh, I'll sync up some of those records yeah, or whatever, yeah. but like, Otherwise, I don't know. How's everybody feeling about this movie? It's not a recommend. It's a sweet, fun time. I can imagine being, you go to your grandparents' house and they want to watch something and you don't want to put on something that's going to make anyone uncomfortable. Yep. You could put this on and like hold your tongue for two hours. But it's also like, because the performances are fine and the direction is good. The story is such trash it, it's not a recommend but i can imagine scenarios in which this movie might be an advantageous sure but there are other movies that do that already sure. like yeah i i do not i i don't like this movie I, I find it really lame like lame is the word for it <laughs> yep i just feel embarrassed watching it honestly <laughs> yes um <laughs> And like, yeah, I guess like the, it, it's shot well, yeah. but it's not edited well. It's no. just still like plot, 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 plot. Let's just keep going. Um, <laughs> yeah, I did not like this movie. Um, I'm not going to really recommend it, but I understand why people could like it. I know it's very like sweet and saccharine, the word going around, but like the leads are are, are good. They're affable. I understand why people can get wrapped up in the story. I was here for the thirst. The thirst was very nice. <laughs> um, but it's just, obviously, there's logic holes. You could drive a truck through it. Um, <laughs> so, you know, there it's definitely scenarios, Steve is right, where this would be the perfect thing to put on. And there's scenarios uh, where it would not be. I, I Such don't, I don't, in Eric's house. <laughs> <laughs> Ever again. I mean, I think St- Steve is right. It's like a utility movie. It's like, fuck, people mm-hmm. are coming over. If I want something where I know for the entire runtime, I'm not going to have to clench my asshole, this movie could fill that slot. Sure. You know, it, it. I totally understand it. It's just, it's way too saccharine for me. I think it's a dumb idea and it's a wasted opportunity and fuck you with that john lennon cameo Mm -hmm. or the robert carlisle appearance as uh i just like that's another thing that's just completely squandered and insulting and i will say just it is shot really well but interestingly enough so the dude who shot it christopher ross motherfucker had a busy 2019 also being the dp on cats oh Oh, wow wow. yeah which so he worked with james corden twice this year Technically, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about nice. that? Well, but yeah, also, I, I, I was just gonna say also, I just, I really like Himesh Patel. I don't know yes. if he's been in anything else. I would like to see him in more stuff. Oh, he was in the Aeronauts, which oh, oh that balloon movie. Does that has, movie exist? It's I, on Amazon, I think. Has anyone in the world seen it? Has anyone like on purpose watched the Aeronauts? Probably not that I know. Of. I know no one personally that has done that. So they're like balloon astronauts. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> there's I, an ad for it above the entrance like to the subway station in my neighborhood and every time i go into the train i'm like oh yeah i'll never watch that <laughs> no i uh, also i'm curious if because it's coming out next year and danny boyle kind of didn't do this d- didn't do it was was slated to be direct the next bond no time to die but then couldn't because of this movie oh, and it man. actually pushed that movie back is that true though <laughs> I th- that, that's what i believe he got, that he sounds- got fucking fired off of that bond movie probably yeah, I, I don't know if he got fired. Yeah, maybe he did. Yeah, that's maybe right. it's, po- it's like, what if James Bond wakes up in a world where nobody's <laughs> heard of James Bond? Get the fuck out. I mean, I'll be honest. I'm more interested in a Kerry Fukunaga Bond than sure. I am a Danny Boyle of course, Bond, Bond at this point. I will say, though, I guess uh, Himesh Patel is going to be in Tenet. 
Oh, really? Oh, cool. Which cool. I've been avoiding the trailer for, but I guess also he was in um, he was in the EastEnders for a really long time, and that's a show that it's against the law to watch outside of the United Kingdom. <laughs> yeah, you can't do <laughs> it. So we know nothing about well, EastEnders. Well, because you just never understand where the doorknobs are. Like, why is it? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> What, how By the way, before door? we end this, let's just, you just issue a blanket apology. <laughs> to the I'm UK, sorry yeah. this sounds insincere because I'm saying it, but <laughs> <laughs> thank you for listening. And I'm sorry <laughs> for insulting Ed Sheeran and other things. The, maybe the Queen. I don't, that, know. That's I don't know what we said. That's Eric's weekly apology. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, that is Yesterday, directed by Danny Boyle, of course, from the year 2019. We are uh, one more to go. In our worst of the previous year month, uh, Steve Sadak, we are capping it off with what exactly? Hobbs and Shaw. Oh, man, I thought we were just going to do uh, Hobbs. We're no. doing both of them? No, we're doing uh, them both. Uh, Three way. Fast and Furious uh. presents <laughs> Hobbs and Shaw. You well, Philistine. Chris Cavins got you dead to rights there, Steve. <laughs> so until next week with Fast and Furious presents Colin Hobbs and Shaw, I'm Andrew Jupin. Steven Sadak. Chris Cavins. Eric Sisko. Take it easy. That was a HeadGum Podcast.